Okay, hereby open board of select a meeting March 18th, 2019 p.m. at 6.30 p.m. This is a joint meeting with the planning board. Mm -hmm. The planning board opens its meeting at the same time. Excellent. Uh, everybody stand. Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, BOS has one piece of old business we just need to get out of the way, and that is the signing of the easements for Bear Hill and Glenwood Place, which we signed only one of the three last time. So if I can get a motion. Make a motion that we sign the Bear Hill easement and the Glenwood Place easement. Second. Any discussion? And those documents are in hand and have been reviewed by council. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Any old business on planning board's part? No? Um, so before we hand it over to uh, Jeff, we're going to go straight to the one uh, request for, I know it says appointment on the agenda, but it's uh, more of a public comment and we will probably reopen public comment at the end pending our discussion. Uh, so now Mr. Blair just walked in. I know we're set up a little differently, so I don't know if you'd like to come down here to speak to us. Wherever you'd like us, you tell me. There you go. Okay. Right up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hot seat. <laughs> I met the podium, but actually maybe Peter will give us some sort of signal about where he wants you. I'm sure he wants you somewhere visible. You should put the podium down here. Well, I think he was involved in the setup. From the podium, the camera can see you better. I think that's all. Oh, okay. So you're going to make me stand up the whole time. We're not going to let you talk that long. <laughs> <laughs> So is it something I can grab those? Uh, you want the agenda? No, he wants the easements. I want the, yes. Oh, oh, okay. You can oh. start talking, but we'll have them at the end. Okay. We all need to yeah. sign. We're, We're going to be passing them down. As oh, you're okay. Speaking. They're like blank forms right now. So, uh, I mean, I when I was sitting over at the planning board meeting the other night, Jeff came in and, and he uh, said that you know they wanted to have a, a hearing, or I don't even know if you call it a hearing, maybe a meeting between the select board and the planning board to talk about a managed growth bylaw. So I, I pretty much came to listen. I don't have, I mean, the only question I have right now until I hear some of the discussion is why. Okay, so you really were here for public comment. You didn't have something prepared to state in advance of what we're about to talk about? I, I don't know what you're talking about except for a managed growth bylaw. So I, if I don't know the particulars, I no, that's, okay. I don't have a, a real. Yeah. Fair enough. If I, if I may, through the chair, yeah, this is, we're still in the, beginning process of trying to figure things out ourselves. So I think that this meeting, this joint meeting that planning board was just gonna handle, go over according to the agenda, the growth manager part as part of the growth management committee. Steering committee, yeah. yeah. So there's been a lot of documents released um, as of tonight now, those are available for anybody to review. I think some people have printed copies of them, you can have a copy as well. Just gonna kind of take over as the member of the steering committee to kind of go through with our both boards right now what all the options are and, and what um, a bylaw might look like. Okay. Yeah, it's just to throw everything in the mix and let's figure out what kind of thing right now, right? So I guess the real, I, the question, the only question I asked Jeff until I hear, can hear some of this is, what I thought I heard him say the other night at the planning board, and I may have not heard correctly because it was, you know, there was a lot of words going was that the reason for the managed growth bylaw was because of the water and sewer issue. Is that, was that the issue or is that? Nope. No. no. It's part of it, but no. Okay, so then I, I guess I have to listen to what, what is said before I can. Fair enough. So we'll return to public comment and you can. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's nothing else for our board, right? We can move on. Planning, you guys good? Over to Jeff. All right. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we'd like to thank our, uh, our brother and sister board, the planning board, for uh, accommodating us on very short notice and uh, coming out for this little, this little meeting here to try to uh, help us with one of the processes along the way with the managed growth uh, steering committee. So what I'd like to do in the next couple of minutes, if I can have five to six minutes of your time, I'd like to bring both of the boards up to speed and provide a synopsis thus far with the Managed Growth Steering Committee. And I say thus far because it's still very much a work in progress. 
So the Manage Growth Steering Committee consists of members of the interested boards. Uh, myself, yours truly for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Williams for the Planning Board, Sean Moore for the Conservation Commission, uh, we have Scott Gilroy for the Board of Health. Ron Barron from Central Mass Regional Planning leads the committee as the chair. We have technical experts from the town, Joe Buckley, our DPW <coughs> director, Mr. David George, our town planner, and town administrator Mike Nicholson. Prior to Mike's appointment, town administrator Margaret Nadowitz and interim town administrator Bob Reed actively participated. So the committee began to meet in August of last year following phase one of a growth study conducted by the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission, which actually began in 2017. The study, I have this written down, Laura, if it helps you, I don't want to... Uh, sure. My, I'll, I'll give it to you when I'm done here. I want to give you a carpal tunnel. Uh, so the study, study was funded through a grant that they received through the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Phase two involved a continued analysis by CMRPC and thus the inception of the Managed Growth Steering Committee. We've had six meetings so far. The goals and the purpose of the committee were laid out at our first meeting on August 16th of last year. This is to be an ad hoc committee. Ron Barron is the primary authority, is going to be selected as chair as he is the subject matter expert. The goal of the committee is to steer the Managed Growth Project as representatives of our respective boards and our positions. At the second phase of the Managed Growth Project, Central Mass Regional Planning looked at capacities, strategies, with the goal to eventually provide a recommendation to our town through the steering committee. Our meeting here tonight is a result of the phase two analysis and reaching the options and recommendation stage by CMRPC. On February 27th of this year, Central Mass Regional Planning presented their analysis to the town. The phase two analysis is outlined before you in the PowerPoint notes. Ron Barron's presentation is available online and it's also posted on our town's website as well as the channel 191 cable. Uh, I'm not gonna repeat his presentation, but I encourage anyone who has not seen it to view it. So out of respect for everyone's valuable time, I'd like to provide the takeaways from the Central Mass Regional's analysis, which leads us to the option phase before us. The analysis looked at all <coughs> land in Rutland. They removed any land that cannot be built upon and identified remaining space with potential to be built on. Rutland has been growing 27% a decade since the 1990s. We have about 400 subdivision parcels approved, but not yet built. If developable land were allowed to be developed, the worst case scenario would show Rutland with 4,800 houses, population in excess of 13,000, students in excess of 2,600. For water and sewer, we are basically up to capacity with sewer possibly going over the permitted limits currently. If we added 3,800 persons to the population and 1,400 new housing units, water would be over by 282,000 gallons per day and sewer would be over by 404,000 gallons per day. If houses within the water and sewer district <coughs> not currently connected were to connect, the proposed water and sewer district, not currently connected were to connect, the town would immediately be over by 48,000 water gallons per day and 44,000 sewer gallons per day. So Central Mass Regional Planning outlined uh, at least six viable options as a result of their study. The first option, request an increase in the daily water draw allowance from Mass DEP. Second, request and negotiate an increase in the daily sewer rate with Worcester when the contract comes up for review. Third, tapping other water resources such as the Quabbin Aqueduct. Fourth, enacting a town growth management bylaw. Fifth, establish a water and sewer district. Sixth, enact a downzoning and upzoning bylaw. With the exception of tapping into the aqueduct at this time, the steering committee is in favor of the remaining options among others. As I mentioned, this is very much a work in progress. Because of the annual town meeting upcoming on May 11th, this presents our only opportunity to pursue the fourth option, being enacting a managed growth bylaw for the upcoming May meeting. The other options remain in play, but since they do not have the unique time constraint of the annual town meeting, the steering committee has chosen to concentrate on the town growth management bylaw in time for the May 11th town meeting and explore down zoning and up zoning options for possibly the fall meeting. Central Mass Regional Planning's final report to the town should be complete around June of this year. Authorities on the subject matter 
and also mentioned in an MDC report in your packet, suggests that such a bylaw is likely going to be a zoning bylaw rather than a general bylaw. Accordingly, the planning board would be the proper authority for pre presentation of a zoning bylaw. The, the bylaw also requires that a public hearing be held by the planning board. In March of this year, the select board voted to support the enacting of a managed growth bylaw. At the last meeting, the Managed Growth Steering Committee similarly voted to support the Managed Growth Bylaw. Presently, the Steering Committee is in the process of reviewing Managed Growth and Phase Development Bylaws enacted by other communities in Massachusetts. I've asked to have included in your packets a handout by the MDC entitled Growth Management Tools, a Summary for Planning Boards in Massachusetts, which you should have. I'd like to highlight a couple of excerpts from the MDC regarding Growth Management Tools. It says, the adoption of local comprehensive plans and open space plans are vital steps in any long-term strategy to cope with these challenges. Even the best plans, however, are only effective if they are implemented through local bylaws, regulations, and policies that manage growth and allow communities to shape their futures. Contrary to common misconception, growth management does not accomplish or attempt to accomplish the end result of stopping growth. Rather, it influences the amount rate, location, environmental effects, and character of new growth. So the immediate focus before us should be the preparation and presentation of a growth management or phase development bylaw for the town meeting May 11. Currently, our town planner Dave George and chair of the steering committee Ron Barron from CMRPC, they are collectively drafting the product based upon input from the steering committee and the respective boards. As the steering committee and the board of selectmen have recently done, I respectfully ask that the planning board vote support towards enacting the managed growth or, or phase develop, development bylaw. Now, such a bylaw would place a cap on building permits for new construction. We need to articulate the number of permits in this bylaw. The number should withstand legal challenges provided such an action furthers a legitimate public purpose, preferably as expressed in an adopted comprehensive growth management plan for the community as stated in the MDC document before you. So I submit that the process that began in 2017, CMRPC's Phase 1 and Phase 2 studies for our town and the work of the Rutland Managed Growth Steering Committee thus far has satisfied the prerequisites and now is the proper time to present a Managed Growth Bylaw before the townspeople. Central Mass Regional Planning recommends that the bylaw include a sunset clause with the town's option to re renew. The sunset clause they benefited the legal the sunset clauses have benefited the legal review of such bylaws according to CMRPC. The normal sunset duration of comparable towns has been between five and ten years, according to CMRPC. Mr. Barron recommends five to seven years. The steering committee also supports including exceptions for fifty five and older housing. As for the number of permits, I submit the findings of the phase two study for the record. I've asked to have those in your packet, as well as these additional statistics recently provided by CMRPC last week. They say, in a review of 1997 to 2018 residential building permits, the town of Rutland has issued an average of 61.5 permits per year. In the past 10 years, the average number of building permits issued were 38 per year. For the past five years, the average number was 43 permits per year. Based on recent assessor's data, CMRPC calculated the price points of a house in Rutland to see the rate of return for our town. CMRPC's findings show that if the home is valued for less than $300,000, Rutland lost revenue. If the home is valued above $300,000, there is a positive revenue. 74% of the houses in Rutland are assessed below $300,000. When asked to rank, CMRPC lists the town bylaws of Leicester, Holden, and Douglas as the best models. I've looked them over, and I like the ones similar to the town of Douglas bylaw. Both Douglas and Rutland have near similar populations, 8,400 and 8,900 respectively, and both are around 15 miles outside of Worcester, among other similarities. Douglas has a zoning bylaw. It appears only to apply to subdivision phasing. Douglas has a one and a half page phase development bylaw, should also be in your packet. It's written in clear terms and has withstood legal review. Their bylaw 
The bylaw limits the building permits for new construction to 15 permits per year. It allows for special permit relief for senior citizen housing and allows for the issuance of a special permit if the planning board determines that the probable benefits to the community outweigh, outweigh the probable adverse effects resulting from granting such a permit. I feel that the number 12 to 15 permits per year is a reasonable and justifiable number to cite in the bylaw based upon a comprehensive study by CMRPC. Bylaws such as Douglas sunset after five years. I would defer to the CMRPC recommendation of seven years, but prefer a sunset of maybe 10 years. I've asked to have the phase development plan of Douglas included in your packets, among others which should also be reviewed by both boards. I believe a replication of bylaws similar to Douglas with a seven or 10 year sunset, not specific to subdevelopment phasing only, would meet our town's needs nicely. So that's uh, basically my summary, my synopsis of where we've been. Um, there's at least two other members here of the steering committee. If there's anything that I, I missed, would you guys want to add into it? That was pretty thorough. So I was impressed, thank you. Well, thanks. I also like Sterling. I thought Sterling was uh, pretty decent. What did you like about it, Dick? Uh, the, the general purpose of it and uh, procedures and uh, special permit exemption. And I just think that it was just a couple of things in there. Just got to make sure. And I'm yeah. going to leave this up to probably Dave to <laughs> or maybe to pull together a little bit easier. But uh, in Douglas, I did like the special permit relief. I think that was excellent. And um, I also would... Uh, yeah. And F, uh, let's see, uh, four two four. Get open space. You know, say open space in there. Particular consideration to be given a special permit application to demonstrate allowance and allowable density is twenty five percent or more. I think open space should be recognized in something like that. But that's my, that's my feel. Yeah. I, um, we just open discussion or through you, Sheila. Um, I mean, I think with the two boards here, we can probably have a pretty open discussion without recognition or anything. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Disrespect you, the chair. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, and we'll, the coin of phrase, we'll Frankenstein it a little bit. We take the pieces that we like. I like the simplicity of, uh, I think Boylson had a very simplistic written one that was mm -hmm. not too confusing. And then pieces that uh, we like, specific to addressing whether it applies to subdevelopments or all new construction. Uh, and then what we also have to articulate specifically is the number. Uh, yeah. What number do we justify? I like using a comparable and not just picking out a number. That's why uh, Douglas really uh, connects a little bit because it's about the same exact size and situation. The other mm -hmm. bylaws that were recommended by Ron Barron you know, with Lester and Holden, but Holden has 200, and it's apples and oranges. It's, mm. It doesn't quite relate as, as well to us. There's a, uh, a section in the Menden bylaw that specifically addresses how many permits a builder can pull so that there's not a monopoly of, if you're going to limit the permits, that it's not uh, monopolized. I think they added like a number of seven. Uh, and a lot of, a lot of them, had very similar language. So I think if we could provide input specifically to Dave George here, because he, he and um, Ron Barron are going to be the architects of, mm -hmm. of the wording, tell us the pieces that we like to go into this pie, um, and then he's going to bring it back to the steering committee and you know, hopefully get some sort of a finished product ready to, uh, for us to vote on. So. Dave, can I ask, <coughs> do you think Boylston, Holden, and Lester have that development schedule where it's one to three, hundred percent, there were exemptions. So essentially saying for any resident who would come in, purchase a single lot with the intent to buy a single house, regardless of whether or not the cap had been hit, that person would be allowed to build a single house for themselves. I think that was sort of what it was trying to encompass. But then it went from, you know, one to three, then four to ten, here's your units per year, eleven to twenty total units in development, thirty-three. Those development schedules across the three or four look the same, but 
are they relevant to us if we head with so. the Douglas model? Yeah, there's Which a few in there that talks about your, your, your single right. builder in there. Mm -hmm. And that's why I kind of like the, the wording of what I just read, right. saying that on a case by case, the planning board can look at a special exemption if it meets, if it benefits, specifically benefits the, uh, the community. So I like having that control in there. So up, uh, we're not doing the, the public comment yet, so. So Boylston has the schedule, Holden has the schedule, Lester has the schedule. Is that something we need to look at? That they're very similar. Or are we looking at just the primary limitation of permits per year? Well, the uh, schedules have to do with projects that are intended to have more than one unit to right. be built eventually. Right. So those schedules are there for that reason to right. uh, manage growth in larger projects. Right. I think the prior attempt of this town back in 2002 had also a schedule similar to yeah. that as well. Yep. So if you're looking to have a management capacity for larger projects, then you'd want to keep the schedule in if you were looking to just have an absolute number of permits that could be issued, that's also possible. Some of the bylaws don't have the schedule as just first come, first serve, and it's just a number of permits that could be issued throughout the course of a year. That's a policy decision, which we'll, hopefully we can get tonight for guidance on how we want to move forward. So for the planning, I think this is a question for you. So for the planning board, knowing the history of the size of the developments that have come in front of us, is it fair to say that we need this schedule? Similar to the one that was on the original managed growth bylaw. Uh, I guess there's two two things about it. Number one, and again, I'm not sure exactly where I read it. I think it was in our original um, article. Hmm. <laughs> uh, the schedule would only affect subdivisions yet to come before us. Yep. Okay, so existing subdivisions would have no effect on them. Right. So that, that's just, you know, anything to, you know. No, the permits don't already. Yeah. It would go through that schedule was going to come into play on, okay, right so that, Okay, you can't. If, if, if it's, or no, you know, if it's, if it's worded as it was here. Um, other than that, uh, I don't know. I personally, and again, I like to speak to the board. I, I don't see any reason not to have it in there. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think the question is historically, we've had sizable developments that would mm -hmm. merit the need for a schedule like this. We have a lot of large tracts of land. Mm -hmm. on right. Okay. All right. Tim's so been waiting patiently to say something. Well, just two things. One, the, the Douglas thing, this is probably going to be directed towards. Um, David, um, that there's a 4.2.6, which is relation to real estate assessment. I'm not sure how relative. It looks like they're trying to get relief. I'm, I don't know if we're looking to, are we looking to take pieces or from all the different uh, bylaws we have in front of us or use one as a template? Pieces. Pieces, okay. I just, that relation to real estate assessment, I was reading through it and I just didn't. I didn't see its relevance to uh, uh, growth bylaws when I was getting that. One thing I would comment on that particular is that I believe that's the only one that has such a section. I yeah. didn't see that section in, in any of the other ones. I'm not quite clear as to what they were trying to okay. achieve. That's that, one was, that was one thing I was curious about. So the second one, um, is the planning board's taking some, uh, I don't call it discretion, but um, What we've tried to do is, is with the subdivisions, uh, force the phased issue. So you have to finish one phase where you're allowed to go into the next one. So in effect, we've sort of, if I'm not mistaken, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, we've, we've sort of done that managed. allocation, managed growth within the subdivisions now by forcing the phasing. And typically, you can't just go phase one, two, three, four and start. It's you finish phase, then you release the covenant and move on. So. We've, we've had some control over that already, if I'm not mistaken. You guys don't jump in. I would say that that's a, a control. I think we're looking more over for if a new subdivision was to come in, um, how 
uh, brace limbs like a hundred and something houses. Do, you know, and only instead of having you can pull permits for a hundred and something houses, or we can limit it that I, you know, only pulling five permits for that. <coughs> well, not really fa for the phase, but for that year, how many we're going to approve for a year. So, like a developer could come in and who would want to do a, a subdivision and then snag all the permits up for on their part, or you would want to limit. See, that's my only problem. How are we going to limit everybody wanting to build something on their property? So, you mean these single houses? Single houses. No, I whether whether I, it's, you know, yeah. I know we'll be talking on subdivisions, but we're talking about all growth. You're seeing, you're seeing the individual, the I think you put something in there. Yeah, I think there's at least a couple, uh, I think like you said, Dick, uh, at least a couple of the sample bylaws that have that type of wording. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of, of replicating already legally reviewed and sufficient past yeah. bylaws with the AG's office as we have a short window before yeah. uh, we wanted to do, do it right. Uh, but if you're taking something and you're going to replicate what's already been reviewed and passed as muster, it doesn't it doesn't uh, delay us a little bit, so we don't have to wait for town council and, and all those other things. So I'm all for using what works. <laughs> yeah, and you know that's if it's been approved already. We did that with the with the marijuana law, so it was yep. all cut and paste. But I think if it, what's important to you guys, well, first we're, we're, we're kind of like a either a straw poll or otherwise. How does the uh, the planning board feel about pursuing the bylaw, such a bylaw. So our, our board voted to uh, support it, steering committee voted to support it. We want to make sure yeah, that it's something that you guys are on board with before we, mm. we force feed it down your throat. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have to let each planning board member speak for themselves yeah, uh, uh, on that. And, uh, you know, my, my own uh, my own particular feeling is, rather than necessarily supporting or not supporting, my intent is that we get a very, very good bylaw written. Okay. So, the, and, 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 in other words, that it, it is something that is legally defensible, that it shows at least some semblance of fairness. Uh, and reason why. And, and can, yep, that's and, the biggest can thing. be implemented. So I guess and, and and has some effect. Okay. As, as, a, as a good example, the initial one. And by the way, I, I no one no one has said anything about the one that we presented 18 years ago. Yeah. We're gonna Which do it. Ironically, <laughs> was was for 56. I mean, the average has been 61 and a well, half, and, which okay. and the last five and ten years have even been less than that anyway. Yeah, so and, and that's that's. The, the point, the point that I was trying to make, that it, that it has some effect. That number would have really had almost no effect. No. So you know that that part doesn't work. That's why I like replicating but, a similar uh, town. And well, like I say, you know, I, I know I was, hey, I was around. I was a part of writing this. I thought we did a pretty decent job. Mm -hmm. in it. Yep. Well, uh, so Norm. So I, I'm, I guess I'm kind of curious as to, you know, well, number one, I, I'd rather start with a template rather than cut and paste. You know, mm -hmm. you can cut and paste from a template. Yeah, and my own personal preference would be take our own. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And start with that, modify it by putting in some of the stuff from Douglas or from wherever yeah. if, if needed. Yeah. So and Norman, I, I don't wanna I think Dave indicated that the Rutland template from eighteen years ago was actually remarkably similar, right, in structure, in base structure to a lot of them that have been approved. So mm -hmm. I think I, I totally yeah. see where you're headed. Yeah. I think Jeff's uh, question was more along the lines of is the planning board prepared <coughs> to move forward with construction and presentation of this to the town at town meeting? Because without um, you we wouldn't yeah. be able to do it, right? right? So that's different yes. from and hearing too. You know, yes. that's different from you sitting in town meeting and voting for it because I heard mm -hmm. you say, Well, we'd have to talk of course we'd talk to everybody yeah. here has and a vote. I think that's a consensus with yeah. With both of these boards that um, because of our constituents, I, I could say, of our town, and what we know of our town resources, the municipality side and the water and sewer, with everything factored in, our town's booming and we can't afford it. Am I wrong on that with anybody? And I think that's one of the reasons why we're trying to come up with a growth manager, because we're growing too fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. 
the, the other thing, and I, I honestly, I just do not recall exactly where this came from. I'm sorry, it's 18 years ago. But I'm sure can't remember we, we, no, we did not write this ourselves. So I reached out to Bob Cox, and he's looking mm -hmm. for some of his old files. But I'm fairly confident that he was one of the mm -hmm. people that spearheaded it at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and he's got some mm -hmm. old files on hand that he's going to hopefully but pass I'm, on to you. Yeah, I wonder if we didn't even have a Bill Scanlon or something Maybe, like yeah. that. Yeah. From Central Mass yeah. at the time. Yeah. And it could have been Jeff Lacey. He might have put in a, a word or two of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Lacey wrote the MDC study, didn't he? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Yeah. If, if I could just comment on, on where, this, where this may have come from. A lot of the language here looks a lot like the model bylaw from the Cape Cod Commission. Which they attached. It's almost verbatim yeah. in parts of this, <laughs> enough so that's not a coincidence. Yep. There may have been other things brought into it for to customize it, but the framework looks like it was based upon what one might want to consider a reliable source for such a bylaw. Yep. Although well, Bob Cox has information, we would be glad to receive whatever he's got. I, I think it's all. going to reflect what you yeah. just said. Yeah. But yeah. But I mean, it's going, if, oh, sorry. if it did come to a town meeting, which, which it did, okay. I'm quite certain it went through the review. Absolutely. Yeah. The only thing that stands out with the old Rutland bylaw is that it's four full pages, and some of the other ones have been condensed down to a, a page and a half, maybe two pages. So I could be a good template, but I wonder if there's ways to make it even more more, more streamlined. I don't know. Possible. Um, streamlined and concise, that's nice. <laughs> that's yeah. just yeah. one thing that yeah. pops out at me. That's for right. Yeah. But. Page and a half. Addison Redfield returns. <laughs> 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 he was all for brevity. <laughs> right Keep it simple. Kiss. Keep it simple. <laughs> um, did everybody, did anyone have comments on the various exemptions? So there's Rutland's exemptions, mm -hmm. which are section six, um, exemptions from the monthly cap, exemptions from development phasing, and then where the planning board could step in and make revisions. Um, the other towns had fairly similar lists, I think, of exemptions. They had, they had board yeah, I think, I think the exemptions yeah. kind of cluster around common yeah. topics. So I actually, Jeff, you know, to your comment, I really liked uh, you know, at Boylston's list of exemptions. They seem really clear to me and logical. So an enlargement, restoration, or reconstruction. Of course, we have residents in town that don't want to think that this construction, you know, that this management bylaw would exempt them from Improving upon an existing home. Yes. Dwelling units for senior residents. Mm -hmm. well, I think it's it's new build construction. I yeah. think that was. Single, I like single home construction. Single though, home not, construction. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not, we're not talking like in law suites and stuff like that, are we? No. No, yeah. that's that's not. It's allowed. It's allowed. Yeah. Duplexes are allowed. And it's classified there, as two, two two units. Two units, two units right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I, mean, I support that. And they articulated a reasonable rate of uh, permits at 20. And I think most of them also are, uh, noted the affordable housing um, categories, which obviously would have been exempt in any way, shape, or form, 40B and all that. Mm -hmm. And also, we should note that the, the Boylson one is, is 1992, so that's got some age to it okay. a little bit, you know. Yep. Uh, the Douglas one has some, some years to it also, but <coughs> not as bad. Uh, so it has to be relevant to the times. Did you say Douglas is in uh, similarity in population, but what about town size? I, th I think it's similar, it's comparable, and then it's... Uh, in square miles. It's, uh, yeah. 17 miles, 17 miles from Worcester, and we're 13. <coughs> I, have, uh, I have friends in Douglas, and there's a lot of lakes and the... What Massachusetts is full of lakes and ponds and <laughs> wetlands, but um, I wonder what they're, they're speaking on behalf of the Conservation Commission. How, if if they've Im implemented anything with their um, wetland protection uh, guidelines, you know, on bordering and you know yeah. feet. Well, we have uh, we had the town planner there. I guess was instrumental in writing their bylaw, and I reached out to one of the selectmen in Douglas, who uh, provided that contact. He's going to reach out to, uh, to Mr. Marks. Because that limits growth as well, yeah, what you can build next to. Well, that's mm -hmm. that up ones and 
So the Jeff. Ones and down ones by law that we talked about. Mm -hmm. haven't been around to writing yet. So the wetland bylaw we discussed also at the steering committee, and when I said among other options, that that's one of them that we'd like to uh, pursue right now. We just want to do the single focus because of that deadline that's that's getting yeah. to us. We don't want to get hung up on anything that's going to linger mm. at legal review uh, for too long. So, uh, although I think to Sean's point, if the managed growth steering committee were to tweak its focus after town meeting. You could continue on through the summer, taking a look at some of those other things, well, and maybe get them. Well, I was just fall. comparing how Douglas, oh, knowing okay. personally Douglas, because I've been down there so many times, so it's it's almost as I would say maybe more wet than Rutland. Yeah. Uh, all the ponds, but it's just an idea for now. If we can compare, because you know, apples to apples, town size, and yeah. because some of these towns like West Boston, uh, they're. Uh, they're a big town with you know a lot of businesses that that are in them and small in land size but small, high population. Yeah, high population and high business growth yeah. too. And I know this is just mostly not growth on uh, on the commercial side of the town, but you know limiting growth on houses. Correct. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing I wanted to mention about this uh, template that we're using, one thing it doesn't take into effect is the uh, town centers that we passed. I mean, they've, you know, we've got three town centers now, the center and then we got north and south, and they have different constraints for building there. You know, you can build that's business and residential. So that's the only thing I want to temper the, the committee on is that somehow that's got to get worked in here because otherwise yep. if you do a managed growth bylaw and you exclude those three town centers, you sort of eliminate the zoning area. I think that might be part of the down zoning and up zoning option that they talked about. So the down zoning would say that you require a minimum anchorage for, say, a residential house. But the up zoning would say, hey, in, in a certain center, we really want to encourage a commercial growth. So you would minimize the minimum anchorage in these certain areas. That would be the up zoning in there. Uh, and that, from the gist that I got, and you correct me if I'm wrong, through Ron at the uh, CMRPC, is that that would be a separate process for the up zoning by and uh, down zoning, you know, for the next, for the maybe the next meeting in there, uh, but not to get. Yeah, we're just talking about a too confusing. Yeah, into a this growth one. management ballot to yeah. page and limit, a half limit the amount well, of dealing with permits. permits. Yeah. yeah. Well, this this actually Good. circles back to exemptions because I think there was one that would speak to what you were talking mm -hmm. about. And then Jeff, to what you're saying, that the one I commented on is a little bit dated. It's interesting that you say that because Lester's list of exemptions actually doesn't reference 40B, which makes me think that because it's MGL, they might have been told by legal that they, you know, streamline, you don't need to include this. This is already covered oh, by law. It's in the MGL. Right yeah, the so it's possible that that's an update there. But I, I think under one of the exemption, um, and I'll try to find it here. It speaks to what you were talking about, which is that the planning board has a little bit of oh, leeway. Yeah, that's seven, isn't it? Revision to the cap. Okay. We'll review the cap for reasonable community pace. Oh, it's every five years. Can you think of something, Dave, that will structure this where town center... I'm not sure how that would work because it's interesting. I mean, I think Rutland's was maybe the only one that had the example of cap on individual applicants. And this question came up really early, which is, well, if we're putting a cap on, what's going to prevent somebody from walking in on January 1st and taking up all the building permits for the year? Right. The, that 5.5. So you look at the menu. <coughs> yep. My men under 5.5, ours have it. And I'm wondering if there's a similar exemption. I think in some of these cases, in some of these bylaws that have been circulated for the review, some have a special permit mechanism, so in an appropriate instance, a special permit may be granted from the cap. So okay. if there's some certain activity in the desirable high density area, then that could be reviewed as a special permit situation or as an exemption if it could be uh, carefully tailored. Okay. So I guess we'll be looking on the lookout for that type of exemption. Otherwise, the likelihood of that kind of development happening to affect these districts may not be great if that's the case. And perhaps it's for another day with another go round with the growth management committee working further on other things like up and down zone. That's the okay. sense that I got in there. So we could, I mean, we could be working on two bylaws. I like the wetland uh, yeah. bylaw also. And the advantage that we still have is that this, this, is, this is funded through grant 
right? So the money still exists that we still have the services of CMRPC throughout the, uh, the needs of the town in there. So that will continue through the summer and right up to the fall meeting for sure. So, um, and the other options in there, the, uh, uh, the water sewer district, that's something that we can do as an ongoing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, it, is it fair to say your concern was just to make sure that mixed-use development didn't get stymied? Is yeah, because it, okay. it, it yeah. seems like the, the, and you guys can again tell me if I'm wrong, we're not really getting mixed-use. <laughs> no. The town of center is getting apartments and duplexes and stuff like that, so yeah. the best laid plans of mice and men just seem to have not worked out, and I think it, it relegates itself to the lack of business. So we want to just not conducive. Right? Yeah, what's happening is we're we're getting condensed building in those zones, is what I'm saying, and and maybe I'm wrong, but that's what seems to be yep. the solution. And uh, I, when we put this bylaw together, we didn't intend that, but that's the result of it. Mm. I still I still think we we need to fi find a way to preserve that concept. Yeah, I, I, I would hate to think someone comes in comes in with a plan. You know, for 20,000 square feet of retail space on the first floor and then apartments above, and say, oh no, you can't have the building permits for the apartments above. That's a good I point. I I've never minute. thought about yeah. that because we're trying to limit the well, population growth really in the town with this growth management. That's what the clause is. The planning board has the, the yep. final say in right. there. Mm -hmm. The benefit yeah. to the town. Special permits can yeah. still be done on case yeah. by case. It's not because, hey, this is. You know, I really need yeah, to I'm just saying pop in it 20. needs to be a provision, I think. Yeah. Jeff, I <coughs> board, the other question that I'm not sure of is, how does this bylaw affect the RDIC? Does that take, because they seem well, to be their own little entity, do they have authority to, uh, to Norm's point, put in a 20,000 square foot Kmart, and I know that that does not going to exist, and 25 apartments or 40 resi uh, condos above it? Uh, the RDIC's master plan pretty specifically Mm. notes that it's not uh, very interested residential. in residential development mm. so I e think except uh, for like uh, cri like whatever Christopher's house was right so oh that, I'm, I'm fine with that yeah. but I just yeah. it was one Senior of those things that and plans change so. I, yeah and I did reach out to Mike Sullivan we should absolutely pull him in for the next one but okay. of course he's got all the historical knowledge from mm. working with you all too so mm. I just it was a question does this bylaw have teeth to be able to handle the RDIC is what I guess I'm getting at I think as long as you include a provision in there that the planning board is the uh, authority over issuing of a special permit on a case by case, if it benefits the town. I don't think we have yeah, the authority the, over RDIC. The RDI, yeah, I don't, we don't think, don't think we do. The RDIC is their own l right. little entity. Mm -hmm. Well, the other the other thing is that with the sunset wow. clause, it's, it's subject to review sort at any time. Sort of. <laughs> well, if yeah. the town changes, right. the structure of the town changes at any time, it can always be brought back up mm -hmm. to. And it, it would sunset yeah. for that reason too. I think it would just. I, I think it would be easy to one line exempt the HPDD, right? There you go. I'm fine with that. There you go. Is either looking for teeth or exemptions. Under exemptions, or like yeah. comma. Yeah. The, yeah. the HPDD. Heights Plan Development District. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, if my initial thought was that was just have the, if that's the case, have the RDIC be the petitioner for the planning to come before the planning board, but if we exempt the HPDD. HPDD. Mm -hmm. That also works and accomplishes the same thing. I like it. Yeah. Okay. If I, you know, I, you know I, I guess, you know, I guess we can. Uh, I, I'm just thinking right now about the solar facility mm -hmm. on the Heights property. Yeah. At least from what I'm understanding, yes, it has to go through their approval process, but it also has to go through the town. planning board. That is correct. Yep. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It's early days. <laughs> So, oh, I see. You're saying to this, wouldn't it be the, the so reverse? The same process for that. Yeah. You know, I we're probably yeah. asking ourselves questions that we can't answer, right? That, that just, one, I, it's I, just yeah. a, a no hurdle we haven't hit. Yeah, yet. I'd rather get RDIC and Lisa representative yeah. for someone that we could. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I may, though, um, when, we, when you talked about one of the reasons that I'm getting that we're doing this whole thing is because the town's growing so fast, and we want to kind of catch up to it. Uh, one of the reasons was that it sounded like to me that when you stated that uh, the, the amount that the houses were costing right now, that the town was losing money because of the tax revenue, I guess, that they lent. Yeah. 
Um, so are we gonna, if you're gonna allow, are you, are you gonna limit permits if someone wants to build a house that's gonna cost five, six hundred thousand? See, there's it's just, I feel like there's gonna be a limit. We are wanting to limit, limit the amount of people, but we're only doing it because the town can't afford, you know, to grow so fast. I mean, like with the police and with all the functions that is, that population draws from the town, from, you know. I, I didn't see, of, of all the bylaws that we sample, I didn't see anything that went into the weeds of uh, mm. the type of house you're going to build, mm, or the yeah. price of the house, the price yeah. point in there. No, I don't think you can. Well, I just think that it's something yeah, I don't think, we yeah, need just, to justify. As well, you know, why are we, and every aspect of why are we creating this? I discuss. I, you know, I think he used that to speak to statistical data, and it's something that we've heard over and over and over, which is new growth was going to make us more money. And what we've seen statistically, yeah, yeah, yeah. and those numbers bore it out, mm -hmm. was that in point of fact, complete residential growth ends up costing a community more in overall public municipal services. Mm -hmm. so and I, I think I'm that's, just, that's yeah. both. I'm just a little bit curious, uh, and, you know, I, I don't want to take the let you believe I'm taking the wrong side of this, but uh, you, you, get, you gave some figures on the value of a house at, at different different stages, and yes. at one point you said it did actually pay for itself. Yeah, it was over, over 300,000. Yeah. 300, right. So mm -hmm. what happened is at the phase one, uh, Ron Barron came before the town at one of the meetings, and he presented data that said that it was basically a 95% of 100% return for a house that, that is built in there. So that for every house that comes in, there's a burden of, say, 5% on the taxpayer. So the steering committee asked, and that was at the beginning of the phase one, we asked to refresh that a little bit. It says, can you give us uh, an update on that? Is that still the case, or has it changed? Well, since phase one and his presentation to the town, we've had a reassessment in there. And the reassessment data based on that altered his numbers just a little bit. So so roughly it's almost a break even a little bit. And we say that for a house or his study has shown that houses that are built for over three hundred thousand, it's about a hundred and one percent or hundred and one point five percent. So it's a small percentage, but it's just a little bit over tipping the scale. And the ones that are less than three hundred thousand, it's a detriment and uh, a burden on the tax. So that was last week's uh, refresh on that and he got that mostly through our assessors' new assessment data. So I feel I, like I, I, I don't want to give uh, Mr. Blair the floor yet, but by the same token, I feel I have to ask this: <laughs> the houses you're building now at Price <laughs> Lemon, what's the average <laughs> price? Four hundred fifty-seven. <laughs> Pretty close to him. <laughs> yeah. uh, probably, I would have. If I had to guess, I'd say around four and four. Okay. That's right now. Now the prices are all going up, so it's going to be higher. They're yeah, about just, that too. They're about four I, I really think we need to really justify. On, so I'm not. I'm not saying that's a justification. I mean, We're all conversation here, so it's. That's all. No, I think the fact that it's getting questioned tonight is fair because we don't get questioned in completely through that process. Mm -hmm. yeah. The statistical data heard, mm -hmm. you know, you hear one thing. Oh, so wait a minute, mm -hmm. if you build really fancy luxury homes, you mean mm -hmm. we'll make more money? And that's you could add not, more police, you could add sure. more. Sure, yeah. that's not bearing out not overall mm -hmm. because yeah. of our percentages. So I think at one point somebody would say, well, you know, if it, if it averages out that our home values, right, go up so much and there's not as many people living in them, but it's a hypothetical that the statistics aren't yeah. addressing. I think this whole thing's kind of hypothetical. I mean, just, I also... I would, I would also be wary of putting a specific dollar amount mm. in the bylaw. Yeah, oh, well, because yeah, right now no, I don't yeah, particularly yeah. care. I'm that just trying to find re you know, a reason. Yeah. I don't know if I'm playing devil <laughs> yeah. advocate on one side. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to consider you know, that price fixing one day. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Put that number in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the other thing that I struggle with that with those numbers is I think that they also the study showed was an, students per household of 0 0.55 students per household. And I can guarantee that the new constructions that are, the $400,000 new constructions are probably h closer to 2 <coughs> or 2.5 or higher kids per household. And I, I think he commented yeah. on that. He had focused in large part, I think, water sewer numbers because we were trying to work out districting mm -hmm. and, and whether any, anything would happen with that. Um, and he was going to go back 
and do something similar to Holden, where they did a very specific to students build out. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, we're hearing in Holden that they need to build a school in five years because of their mm -hmm. population he's, increases. He is, he is going to continue okay. with the yeah. student. He's also going to do a traffic study yep. in there and try to get updated traffic data. He said uh, with the two measures being 2005 and then as close to now as possible to show. So there's, there's other mechanisms in there. There's, mm -hmm. there's drain on the public safety resources, uh, adding to the resources, the police department, the fire department, highway streets, and you know, more specifically the, the school. So. so that was an interesting question, though, in, the, in respect to going back to Ron Barron. So when we look at, uh, the slides aren't numbered on here, but when you look at assumptions and sources on the slides, it's not, yeah, page two, I don't know what slide it is, the top right slide. And to Leah's point about students per household being 0.55, it's obviously getting skewed by our lower housing stock. And the newer housing stock, despite the fact that it is more expensive, is actually not coming in at students per household at the .55. And I Dot wonder if he'll be able to break that yeah. out. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure if he can. I was struggling with those numbers. Because $11,000 a kid, you start bringing a new construction with two kids. Yeah. That's twenty-two thousand. Mm -hmm. There's and no way our taxes cover no. twelve thousand. Take, yeah. No. And as we all hear, they want far more than twelve thousand dollars per child. They oh, want, they well, want the, you know, for the state <laughs> okay. average is getting closer to fourteen. So. Uh, okay. Kids need some different dishes. Good, just more. So can we agree that the planning board is on board for pursuing this? Oh yes. This direction. Yeah, I so we can we said that. I, well, I, I think if I think we want to go down the line, I'm for. I of management, but I just want to justify why. Absolutely. Yeah, you know. I think your chair probably needs to call a vote on that because we we've done it formally. You, your committee has done it formally. Yep. Yeah. So the minute I agree, not so much what goes into it, but just whether or not the board would support the proposal of a bylaw for a town meeting. I also recommend. Not the guts of it. <laughs> no, no, just the support of these. Yeah, I'll uh, second. Just of the bylaw. So presentation on yes. the growth management bylaw. Bylaw, yeah. Okay. Tour subcommittee. Do I have a second? I second. He seconded it. Oh, he okay. motioned, he seconded it. Okay. Discussion by the planning board? No. no. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. So the next is to start throwing stuff at poor Dave mm -hmm. here on, on uh, what's important. Poor Dave. To us. Poor Dave. <laughs> well, he's poor Dave. Dave loves it here. It's so much better than Lexington. <laughs> oh. of Lexington. What's important? Lexington's uh, just dealing with, you know, knockdowns and rebuilds. And then the number. A million, too. <laughs> and then the oh, number, wait. the justification for the number. That was for the empty lot. Yeah. yeah. That, that's going to be the, good friend living in Lexington. To me, the biggest, the biggest, yeah. most important thing is yep. the number. coming up with the number. So I heard yeah. in your presentation, or in your spiel Jeff that the from 97 to 2018 it was 61.5 permits per year average however within the past five do you have those yeah. numbers actually I, have the, I actually have the minutes if you want it of that meeting in there so uh, the spike was prior to it was right around the time of the bylaw attempt I believe right mm -hmm. yep. uh, I have the, the minutes of Mr. Ron here of the steering committees last week's um, while Jeff is looking for that I also do want to note that um, town clerk Anita Carlson did email exactly the minute the moment started to say that a new page on the website has been made under temporary boards and commissions for the minutes of the managed growth steering committee so if anyone's looking for the minutes and the agendas of that that is where they can be found So while Jeff's looking, the numbers on the packet that we got, Blackstone 10, Boylston 20, Douglas 15, Holden 224 months, Lester 124 months, Menden 39 per calendar year, Upton 44 in two years, and Sterling 30 per year for 15 years. And I think we noted that a few of those had that development schedule, which Rutland's showed as well. I'm wondering if we need to go back with building permits farther than we would have. Because, you know, of course, Rutland had an unprecedented, you know, state noted building boom. Those numbers would skew our average no matter what. So if, I think if we take a longer look than maybe a typical town would, 
we're going to get closer to what the average should be for a town our size, if that makes sense. Or we could relate it and do some sort of percentile population. There was there was a couple that had like a point thing, a points <coughs> system in there. It got a little bit confusing for, yeah. for my brain. Uh, that was for granting what permits to grant, I think. Yeah based on this. I'm a simple, simple guy. Well, I think when we're looking at comparables, right, and you're looking at that 10-year average or whatever, there are, there are peak years that are skewing our averages, right? and those might want to be... That's right. And he threw, he threw out a, a little pie chart on that. I'm just going to say, I mean, I think we probably want to go back to the CMRPC to see if they can help us with the, okay. an approach. Yep. They have, from their experience working with these types of bylaws with other communities to see if they have an approach that they would suggest, yeah. that would be a rational approach. So he, he does have that. He did he did this study here. I didn't bring it up here because it's too That's confusing the in itself, but it did show, it, yeah, it, it's just a cost revenue ratio of a single family house. Yep. Uh, but you know, again, you have to take the timing, the timing and perspective of some of these bylaws that the higher numbers might have been looking for more of a growth. Right now it's an it's inevitable flow and what we want to do is is put a little slowdown in there okay. so that we can absorb a little bit. Like level a whiplash, out a level it out a whiplash, yeah. let the kids grow up and through. That's why I like the ten years uh, yep. the ten year sunset in there. Um, and I have no problem with the sunset in there that forces a review to make sure we reassess. So but Ron Ron recommends based on a study seven. I whatever. Seven Seven years. Mm -hmm. so, oh, seven years. Yeah. So to give to Ron, what factors would we be looking at to come up with a logical number of building permits? Yeah, what do you want to... I'm, I'm, I'm just... Yeah, yeah, I have this. I, I, I guess... Maybe we'll talk we're, we're looking... Did you see it? We're looking to Rutland's future. Mm. Why base it on the past? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Right out we're going to have to base it on something, but okay. <laughs> well, yeah, well, no, I know, we, we do have to base it on something, but that just almost seems like a contradiction to me. Put it's a number on the table. Build, you know? Uh, what you want to build out to an average? Uh, I think maybe an average of the last... Of the, you know, well, the last year's building permit. Well, go, that's what some of them did, 67 a, excuse me, we've been averaging 67 a year for the past, since 2000, right? I'll say, so, I'll no, say 35. Hmm? Okay, well, well <laughs> so, so the issue we have, to Norm's point, <laughs> at looking at our history, you can pull building permits for 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. And the issue we have with our mm -hmm. history is that in the, the absence yeah. of any structure that was that was constraining the building permits, mm -hmm. we had a huge boom that was market-driven, and we had a slowdown that was market-driven. Mm -hmm. And so what do we look to to try to figure out? Okay, so in our huge boom, market driven at the beginning of it, the town was rolling in free cash, right? And then at the end of it, the boom was still happening. The town was no longer rolling in free cash because yeah, those new China. that new growth cost us more in infrastructure mm -hmm. than we were than we were taking in. Mm -hmm. So where was that point where we can absorb? So maybe to your point about the future, to all of you, right? What's that point? That mm -hmm. perfect point where we can absorb across infrastructure, right? Public safety, DPW, the whole nine yards, education. Right, yeah. and, and not have it adversely affect our existing taxpayers. And that's where I hope and Ron would come in to this He's whole. He's trying. He's trying, but I think it's a bigger than what he is uh, biting off yeah. myself. He just said there was 4,000 houses that could be built out. <coughs> to Norm's point, if you did 35 or 40 in 10 years, that's 400 houses. That's 10% of the dent in 10 years. That's not a significant dent in a 4,000 uh, build out. Yeah in 10 years, I just, that seems really small to me. And I, I'm okay with that. I'm just saying that. With all doers, so the number, the initial numbers that are thrown out there, 35 and 40. If we do 40, that's two over the average of the last 10 years anyways. So that's not any dent. In fact, that's a benefit of two extra permits a year based on their study. So. Uh, from the minutes of last week, the review of 97 to 2018 on residential building permits, the town of Rutland specifically has issued an average of 61 and a half uh, per year, but in the past 10 years, the average building permits issued were 38 per year. For the past five years, the average was 43, 43. permits per year. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to make a bite, if you will, 35, 40 is, is comparable to the status quo now. 
And it gets back to the, what the original Rutland permit was of a cap of 60 if we were averaging 61 and a half at that time. And I think it needs to be based on the comparables that we found. Right? Douglas is comparable. <coughs> Boylston is definitely <coughs> comparable to us. Boylston was 20. Douglas was 15. It, um, it, if I may, again, the did you throw out a number on how many uh, permits are currently active in the town right now? Uh, up to 400. They're, they're currently going on. Um, I wonder if, uh, I don't know if the planning board will be able to answer this, if there's somehow uh, that we can do a moratorium on all building until all those permits are finished. Um, there was some recent uh, at the request of the board um, in your packet today is a copy of a moratorium vote that the city of Marlboro did on building permits um, moratorium votes are a lot shorter in timeline than if it was a sunset clause two by three years. correct it can only be up to two years up to, yeah. um, so that is what this document that you have in your packet is is a copy of a uh, it's, 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 in, two it's years. like a, it's like a timeout until you can get to town meeting but we're ready for town meeting we've yeah. done the study mm -hmm. it says there has to be a comprehensive plan uh it's been done we have a timeline may 11th mm -hmm. we're right on track it's time to do it we we voted you voted steering committee voted go forward yeah go forward pick the number Make it make it rational. Do you guys want to vote on a number now? Vote on a number. <coughs> I don't think you can sit and just make a random number. I think you have to base that number on the economics. Now, how you get the economics to to make that number, I'm not quite sure. But um, you have to base it on economics. You can't just base it on. Yeah, what all right, we want. Thirty-five sounds good. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. most all of them have been based on the review of permits issued. Uh, in the past, so that's why he gave those numbers. Last five years was. That's not basing it on economics; it's basing it on past history. Mm -hmm. Correct. But past history was directly affected by economics. There is no reason Correct. we would but have had a building the, boom and then a building and, and slag. But at the same and time, the if you look at oh. if you look at the documents there, they say that the houses over three hundred thousand basically pay for themselves. But the last comment at the bottom says. Those houses generate more kids, so it actually <coughs> it actually uh, downgrades that opinion. Yep. You yeah. He the said in the line. end, it's basically a, a, a balance, yep. a wash. So <coughs> it shouldn't be the, the source of our of our financial woes. Is the takeaway right? Getting more houses is not going to help us with the five hundred thousand dollar burden mm -hmm. that the school wants this year. You know, it's. There was, there was, uh, I'm trying to find out where I was reading it, where they, they showed the, the rationale and the formula for certain towns picking their number. <clears throat> Maybe it was in the NBC study? Perhaps, I believe it was. It says. Let's take a look at the old but, NBC But you know what I'm getting at? Yeah. For the, sure. You have to base it on the economics. You can't base it on a random number. So, Wayne, if we go at it from your direction, I think we need to go to the assessor's documents. You know how they do that great brochure, the valuation and tax summary? And the one for FY19 is up. And it breaks out town services, cost of an average tax based on a total average tax bill, which in 2019 is just over $5,000, mm -hmm. based on a valuation of 287, which kind of speaks to our majority valuation house in town, under $300,000. Right. <coughs> I wonder if we come at it from that because, and, and again, and to the point where Ron needs to tweak his numbers with the assumption that large houses of high value are not going to attract um, empty nesters, right? They're going to mm -hmm. attract families, most likely, on average. I think we need to maybe, maybe we can work it in partly that way. Maybe. It's. I'm not sure that it's as direct as just part though, of the number. Yeah. Yeah, the end of the day, pretty specifically does say that, that you know, it's often set at the well, end. Yeah. Uh, page six. 
Are you accepting public comment? Because there's a hand over here. I mean, I'm almost. I think you're almost there. I'm almost there. Right now, we're having a meeting. Almost. <laughs> so, take it says. Take notes. Take notes. I can't. It takes too much to write. It's a lot to. Building caps. It says the number of permits is often set at the average for the previous five or ten years to stabilize growth, but may be set lower or somewhat higher as desired by the community. It's generally acknowledged that a town cannot limit the subdivision of land in this manner, but can only pace the construction of dwellings on the newly created lots. The technique is not designed to stop growth, but rather to help avoid unexpected growth spikes, which is what we've had, so that the provision of town services can keep pace with new development. So we can go higher, we can go lower, based on that, on the average. So I just gave you the average of the last five and ten years. It's so, yeah. If we go by the study of people building houses at 400, 400 plus thousand, well, we're going to gain some serious ground. Uh, if you go by that study. Yeah. Yeah, so the, 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 it, there, right, right there, the thing comes down, okay, what is our actual goal? Is it to eliminate spikes or is it to slow down growth, period? It's, I think I Which just hit it right in the head there, so we can pace ourselves here, that we can catch our, okay, so catch our breath. So it's to even out spikes. Yes. Even out the spike a little bit, and then that, so and then you lower, you lower the sunset cool. clause. Then, yeah. if you think, no. I don't know. I'm, I'm asking the question. We okay. had if we want to if we want to even out spikes. Okay. Then you base it on this average. So that's a fair question. So when right. we had, if you want to do something else. And the base on something different. I'm wondering if we're, it's actually both. The spikes didn't mm -hmm. affect us the moment they were happening. The spikes affected us later because mm -hmm. we couldn't absorb mm -hmm. the amount of town services, you know, increases that were needed. So I'm wondering if the spikes are part of it, but the amount of growth overall was part of it as well. We never got a chance to catch up. It's what we've been doing for 10 years, right? In the, in the absence of a manager of bylaw, we've been using to Wayne's point, economics and the market to use this slowdown period to catch up in our town mm -hmm. services. So, do, do we agree? We want to, we're looking at I doing think both. Two goals: eliminate so spikes. I, I don't think you sure. Do that. Mm -hmm. so it's yeah. well, it's multifaceted. There's a lot of different things, yeah. right? I mean, I think the short term would be to give us that time to catch up and slow, and then the long term is to keep those spikes from you know, from killing us. Back to do this all over again. Nobody ever asked the question, are we ever going to catch up? <laughs> it's not going to solve all our problems. Seriously. No, well, no, no, we're going to right. keep it from Wayne. It's, 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 it's the horse from the barn. You got eight, 16 years of a kid in school. I mean, huh? it, it started 10 years ago. I don't see how mm -hmm. catch up is even. It, it's to the point of what um, well, Norm was saying. You got to spike. Yeah. You got to stop the spikes. It's all you can do to It may help some. But it's not going to solve. All yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's what but, I but you know what? It, is it fair to say across both of our boards, nobody here, nobody can or I would think wants to stop development. At some point, regardless of what any of us do, this town will be built out. It's really just a question of how fast it happens and how painful it is as it happens. And it's been really, really painful because it was too fast. But I mean, again, you know, you look at 128 Belt, they don't have our problems. They have rebuild problems. Mm -hmm. The town of Concord has, I don't even know how many pages worth of um, regulations <sighs> regarding a reconstruction, tear down, tear down yeah. reconstruction and all the additional charges mm -hmm. you have and all the, you know, that's their, that's their deal. There's no land left. Mm -hmm. even the same problem. Yeah. So our, our problems someday maybe will be Concord problems, but for right now they're growth management problems. Right. It's a different type of housing market. <laughs> yeah. Out further east, the build-out rate is much higher than it is here. Yep. So the way to capture new growth is through the tear down and rebuild model. But that's not what's happening. That's the different economic yep. and building climate than what's happening yeah. here. Can we leave here tonight with a consensus at least of the number that we would like to steer towards, knowing that the average is 38. The first number that came out was three less, three permits less, and then the second one was two permits more. Mine is what half, half, not even. Wow. Yeah. Um, 
Anybody else have any numbers they want to? I got tons of numbers. <laughs> I'll stick with mine. What was yours? Uh, I might get one. Take it easily. Twenty Here's less. Yours just I, uh, thirty-five or forty is the number I kept in my mind. Thirty-five forty is the same as what we are. Mm -hmm. Then we can close without moving forward. It's the same. The same as the past five-year average. Yep. Mm -hmm. Five years but is, is, is the average what our problem is, or is it, is it still because of the spikes? See, that's what I agree with. What, um, Jeff, do you have that information? What was our low? What was our nadir? <laughs> what we're doing? Like the, well, the low was uh, the last 10 years. So the last uh, last five years was 43. The last 10 years was 38. Oops, and prior to that would obviously have been right. a spike. But do we have a low point? Do we have a... That low point, that low point seems, seems to have started... Here. At the beginning of the recession, so 20, yeah, 2008. 2008. So we go back. And 10 how years. many was that? I don't have that. Down. Okay. Yeah, you didn't give it. Mm -hmm. But the average was 61 and a half per year. So if you look at 97, 07, the last 20 years, 61 and a half permits a year. Throw out the other two numbers if you don't want to. Uh, I just don't. I just don't think that the status quo was 38, right? So. It sounds like we're somewhere between 20 and 40. Is that fair? I think um, I mean? Boylston's was 20. Right? Boylston Douglas is 20. Yeah. Douglas is 15. 15 houses. Yep. I, I, I thought we agreed that we want to have some bite. Sterling cool. is 30 for the next 15 years. Mm. No, didn't that expire? It's expired in 2013, if I remember Sterling. Yeah, I don't Did they know. Renew it? I'm not sure. That's, That's my question, question because it was yeah. it was enacted in '97, and it expired in 2013. I don't. But it did have in their in their clause to they can't extend it. I just don't know if it has been extended. Yeah, I mean, we can try to look at it. Well, they look like they're working on their master plan now, so it might be something they're mm -hmm. revisiting. Can you guys live with 20? Well, the reason I, I can live with 15. <laughs> I, mean, I like yeah. I like 15 with with controlled by the planning board. How much would that hold up? Hopefully, a special permit. How on fair case, is that? Case by case. Well, yeah. here's something to think about. When we set this number, we need to remember that that schedule allows for individual construction. So 15 might actually turn into 26 because you're going to have some individual house lots getting yeah, built. Ours. But at the same time, you're going to have to go to the uh, town meeting and you're going to have to. Justify the number that you put up. Yeah. Yep. You have to, I know, are you, you going to articulate that number? So that's part of it. Uh, it goes back to my yeah. to my question about basing it on economics because that's what people are going to look Capitalism, at. Capitalism. That's the they're not going to look at. Well, we should keep it at 15. They're going to say, well, why 15? Why not 20? So wait, you know I'll, I'll be honest. You know how we go into town meeting and there's sort of there's always been a sort of assumption that there are people that are going to vote one way for one part of the budget regardless, regardless, regardless. and one way for I think. That's what we're going to have. No matter what number get, that gets put out there, the people who are going to vote for it probably wanted it lower, and the people who are going to vote against it wanted it higher or not at all, um, and there's probably no meeting in the middle. Half, half of the five-year average is 19. Half of the five-year average. Okay. Here's your rationale. I'll be okay with 19. Okay. If you want to take it to... We can't. Why 19? Do <laughs> With full control by the planning board for case by case and a sunset clause, you can lower the sunset clause if you mm. you can make it a three year bylaw if you, if you felt that strong that you wanted to reassess it then. But well, the, the average is five to ten. Well, here's the thing: moving forward, we're looking at having enough information that David can draft for us a pretty comprehensive first run at this, and then we're going to have to go mm -hmm. to a public hearing anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get a lot of feedback on this number. I think the question is, where is our starting point? Yep. Is our starting point high and you get feedback that it's too high? Is the starting point low and you get feedback that it's too low? There's probably some happy medium, but either way, we're going to get comments back. Oh, yeah. If, 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 if I may, who um, is the uh, bylaw subcommittee going to be involved? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I may. Well, no, it's zoning. Yeah. Well, that's zoning. Which is zoning. zoning. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, okay. Two guys. Yeah. On you. Yeah. Yeah. Peter so, is here. We signed up for as a rep from the bylaw committee, but they specifically say in their charge not to touch any of the zoning bylaws, which this would be. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This is. I wouldn't say this is straight zoning. We asked to have them as invited as a courtesy. Yeah. I just, 
Anytime. Anytime. We have to get our final slip to me. Fired up. So, did I hear, did I hear a number? Did you hear a number? I, tonight's not, not particularly. Uh, uh, yeah. you, you know, I, yeah, I don't think we can, I, I mean. No. Yeah. I, say, I, I wouldn't. No, again, tonight. it's not set in stone tonight. Mm. I, I personally don't like a number like 20, however. And I'll go right back to what I started, what I said way, way back when. My concern is that we write a good bylaw. And I don't yep. care. In that, in that vein, uh, as far as, you know, the work at least that I'm intending to do, I don't care whether the number is two or 200. Fair enough. Uh, to your point, and I think you said this when you said about writing the good bylaw in mm -hmm. the first place, with that first bylaw the, from Rutland, what, 18, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I thought you had said that it wasn't necessarily a good bylaw because that cap was it almost it wasn't fifty six. It was a high cap given mm. what what we were seeing. So I'm thinking of ways that we could improve upon that. It seems like if I heard you say that correctly, which maybe I misunderstood. I don't know. Is could go lower. Well, it has to be lower than that to make to make a no, but no, lower no, from that. from what we were what we're currently seeing what the average is. Significantly. I mean, if you so, otherwise, then what's the point? What's the point? I, I think mean, fifty percent is a reasonable place to adjust fire. You know, I moved in here at, this, at that 15. time, and at that time, we bought our house in '99. That was just before the bar. Before the here's forty thousand dollars on top of the asking price. So build out around Rutland was going crazy because Holden had gotten to a point where they built out. And then Oakham and some of the other outlying towns have enacted larger parcels. So Rutland was, if you want to use the phrase affordable, and that was where that building was happening from 99 to say 05, 06, before the recession. So, you know, this 60 back then might have made sense when they were pulling 100 permits or, or thereabouts. I, say, I know you said the average was 61, if I'm not mistaken. 61.5 over the okay. last 20 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it seems to me when we were writing this, you were probably seeing a hundred. Mainly more. remember a year that it was like seventy-five. Okay, that's really permits. Yeah. So and again, at that at that time we mm. came in significantly lower than what was happening right at that time. Right now we're at thirty-eight. I think it's. I think it's fairly clear, looking back, that the town could not functionally. Forty-three. Stand correct. Functionally absorb the number of building permits we were approving at the rate those houses were being finished and sold. I mean, looking back at our infrastructure and what we had to go through and, and our finances year to year, I mean, we're still taxing to the levy. Mm -hmm. So clearly something's still wrong. If we, and actually there's, t again, getting back to Wayne's economics, that might be what we need to look at. What, when was it that we were under the levy with some room, not taxing mm -hmm. people to the limit, and still able to function and provide the services at the level people wanted? Early 2000s. Yeah. Well, if you go back to the original bylaw that you wrote uh, only many years ago, it was in Section 3. It says the cap can be modified upon evidence related to the town's ability to provide, have, provide necessary public services without a reduction in level of service. So how, do you, how, how do you determine that? Yeah. And that well, goes back to my same question, it's the economic. How do you, how do you determine that number? Well, I mean, and how do you determine? I mean, I don't know. What well, do you mean? I think that's easy. You go to town meeting and say, we can't afford what we need to provide you. We can't even do a level funded budget. How many years did we do a, try to do level service? Mm -hmm. Had to throw that out. Then we had to do level mm -hmm. funded. We have been cutting services But you have since. to say why. Well, that's why. Mm -hmm. Why says, we can't. as desired by the community, mm -hmm. thus the need for the public hearing. Maybe we should let the town meeting decide the number. Cool. Yeah, they, they, need, oh. they need to hear. <laughs> give they to, need give to three hear. numbers and be like, yeah. okay, you well, pick. No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, do do that, Sean. This is it. You want to have a three-day town meeting? No. I, yeah. I feel yeah. like that would be something to do for a public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, see what public that, hearing. Put the public have there. That's what the hearing's for. And then you give them the one. There's the town meeting. By law, so it doesn't turn into a filibuster. This failed last time. Yes, it did. Just be able to why it failed? It wasn't written good enough. No, 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 that wasn't it at no, all. No, no, I'm just throwing that. Was it, was it not? Stacked. Was it not? Just, oh. uh, There's nothing you can do about that. The same thing's going to happen. <laughs> um, he he, uh, he loaded the, the floor. 
For every one I put in, you got to put two. Yeah. But okay. the wow. point is, that's excuse that's me. That's how many work. <laughs> Sorry. Not, that's right. Yet. That's how they work. So. Um. It, it's sounding like we have a range. We have a cap that nobody's comfortable above 40. Is that what I heard? I'm fine. And we have a minimum. 15, and we 25. have a minimum. People have thrown out 15. I haven't heard anything under 15. So we'll start from there for tonight. Yeah, I think a bigger range. any kind of a number that's going to go in there will be uh, caveated with an asterisk. Sure. It's not a final number. It's no. just a placeholder. Uh, and that, well, that placeholder can be sorted out yeah. in, yeah. in due time with the hearings that would have to occur to support such a number. And the second number is the sunset years, the number of years for a sunset if we included that. So. And once again, that number is going to change depending on the number put in for permits. Because if it's a high number, it might be a low sunset. Well, I'm just going to oh, leave that as a place where I'm going to put a range. And that would probably not going to be, it doesn't sound like that's going to be adjudicated tonight. That sounds like that's for a future time nope. and hearing. So I'll put in a range okay. based upon this conversation. And just Unless there's something else the board want, the boards would look for me to do. It sounds like we have 5, 7, and 10, right, as choices. Yes, so based those would be the ranges. I'll go through it. I like 7. I like the sub, yeah. Yeah. the 30s and the no. We did the study, said that, it, that the norm of the sampling is 5 to 10. He specifically would recommend 7, 5 or 7, I believe mean, his words were. Um, I have the minutes here if anybody wants to look at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think we're all clo at least close on that one, right? Yeah. No problem. Uh, and nothing stopping anybody from bringing it to town meeting prior to then, if whatever, to change. Um, I feel like those are two very workable ranges, though, to work on for a public hearing with the uh, building permit cap range that we have and the sunset range that we have. Those are both things that people can come to the public hearing and support one versus the other. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just looked up Starling, and uh, there's nothing listed on their website in the bylaws that indicates that they didn't allow it to sunset, so it's, I don't know. Somebody yes, somebody. Um, <laughs> some of them didn't have it. I'm just saying Ron said that uh, on attorney on review general. by the Attorney General, Mass Attorney General, yeah. and the courts, it's upheld because the town offered that exit in yeah. there. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're absorbing the, the expertise that, that's being fed to us mm -hmm. a little bit. And uh, I think that would help Norm. justify the number that we pick. I've got an important question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If Dave works on putting this together, typically the bylaw subcommittee's done that. Now we have a planner, so you think we he put that together and present it to the bylaw subcommittee? Yeah. That's what. Okay. That's. I was looking for a procedure because this is a little out of what we've done in the past. Yeah. It, is, it's, it is a little bit different, but uh, Dave and I talked about this. I think already. Yeah, I'm good with the, that. I just want to make sure all, I all of the easier. steps. It's all Dave's fault. Uh, <laughs> no, maybe we can get the shell of it with everything but the final numbers to be. We can have another joint meeting after the public hearing. After the public because that's right here, based on the desire of the community. Yeah. So that you all think the next step would be for planning board to post a, a public hearing? Mm -hmm. You have to. Next, I mean, it's before required if next next before you can put it before the uh, well, next year. We're well, working 60 hours a week. I talked to the whole about that schedule. So okay. Almost. Almost. We can have that conversation oh, offline. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Gotta, this is process. He's got to go first. Okay. Well, all right, we'll, we'll circle back to you. Um, I'm thinking you probably want to, all right, all right go ahead. Pete. I, I'm sorry, but there is a process thing because in order to post hold the public hearing, you have to have the text of the proposed bylaw se yes. seven days yeah. in advance. Yep. And that means you can't book it next week or the week after the week after that. Dave has a schedule. Okay. Thank you though. <laughs> right? It's gotta be done. He has a backdated schedule because we knew we were working with a hard date of right. May 11th. So yeah, okay. he has a backdated schedule for you. Yeah, that's the wheel of fortune. Okay. And then after that hearing, the bylaw get the bylaw subcommittee to form a hearing, a meeting, mm -hmm. and then before work on it. Before, well, before the planning board's hearing, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that was my first question. Would mm -hmm. right. do you want to do a meet? Okay, but so, so, so do we all agree that you want to work off the uh, the basis of mm -hmm. what you started in two thousand and two? That's with the highlights that you've been taking notes on, yeah. Dave? Dave's got a lot of notes. Yes, which is what I understood to be the case, to work yeah. off the 2002 prior attempt, 
with the specific things of interest to this committee, which I can maybe get from the video if I need to refresh my memory or your notes or our notes. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and brevity. Well, it's only. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, there's a model bylaw, which is pretty brief until the point, so yeah. it's not yeah. trying to work in that direction. Or a smaller font, at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> wide, <laughs> wide margins. <laughs> and then... One space. <laughs> the space. Let's keep, keep the communication be. with with each other. I, yeah. They just get a bylaw subcommittee to get, a, get active. Yeah. Reconstitute it. The, the bylaw subcommittee hasn't met in a little while, right? You right. haven't had. Yeah, it. not since Tommy. Not since Tommy. Before Tommy. Well, you needed a break after that. So that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This okay. is going to be a lot, also. Bonnie Bessie emailed me the other day. When well, we're going to get started again. Yeah. Now you got something to tell him. Tell him. <laughs> Do you think we can get a bylaw meeting on the eighth? You're going to have to get it. I mean, if well, we have growth management next Wednesday, days. and then we have planning board. I mean, uh, I'm just looking at. Well, it sounds like maybe Dave well, need, has a schedule or yeah. an idea of a schedule, and I mm -hmm. thought he was going to have a draft. Yeah, Dave, to you know, Dave, Dave send and Rod have got to put the yeah. draft together first. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what would you like to do for growth management next week? Is that next week? Tw on the 20. The 24th? 27th. 27th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we, we got to. Give Dave some leash here. Let him uh, connect with Ron. Get together some some the crux of it, and then present it back to the steering committee. We can jostle it a little bit. Report so to our respective boards as we as we continue to meet. Put it on everyone's agenda. Moving forward between now and uh, in town meeting, work towards <coughs> final, getting the finalized product. <coughs> as we get that soon as possible, seven days before we can get our hearing, right? Mm -hmm. And then, then we throw it, well, then we, then we can get an outline the, for us by the 27th. Well, I was hoping <coughs> to have a good working draft based upon all this feedback tonight, working off the template from 2002. Okay. You're going to have it tonight? That's fantastic. Yes. You have a computer right there. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two computers, I, one for each hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. So I'm hoping to have a good working draft for next week, which would then be what we would, as we talked about with our scheduling today, mm -hmm. involving the bylaw subcommittee, or the planning board's bylaw subcommittee, yep. and so forth and so on. So. Yep. And we went out, I mean, this year we discussed it, we, we, we wanted to have a full-time professional town planner. We've got a full-time professional mm -hmm. town yeah. administrator. You guys been Sometimes you gotta, well. let, you, you gotta let them do what they do, you know, mm -hmm. without too much meddling. Uh, so I, I don't want anybody to think we're finishing up. I mean, because we sort of are, but we have public comment. Are we are we ready? Yeah. Public comment. Sure. And do you 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 had a process point, right? That was it. I actually have one other point, but okay, I'll but my no, turn he, to he do has like. to go first. No, so, okay. Thanks, sir. You ready? Do we want him at the podium? Do we need him at the? Yeah, it's but I I'm more up to you. Like Where do you want him? Um. Corinne probably doesn't have anything on the podium right now, so we can okay. get you. We can get you on camera more easily right where you are than we Perfect. can. Okay. So, through either. So, from listening tonight, I, I have to say that pretty much this, the idea of a managed growth bylaw, is based upon the CMRPC report and what they've come back with to the to the select board and to the planning board. So. The reason I asked that is because you, you read, it seemed like you read from that, and at the time, the num if you could just, because I didn't write them down as you were saying them, did you say there's, there's 4,000 buildable? 400. There's 400 uh, of no, 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 approved no, no, lots? Or 4,000 buildable. Approved lots. But, yeah. There's the 400 out. approved lots? I'm you got, to you have to look at the study that yeah I don't I don't have he did there yeah the McAllister yeah. Noble Hill and yeah well, McAllister's is not approved yet right. but no but um, this is the, the slideshow slide show though is that yep. at the public so, hearing that we thank you. Yep. so I mean, he didn't have a public my, hearing on this my, the point that I'm trying to make is that from the numbers that I heard how did they determine what land is buildable and what isn't yeah. so I you, think 
Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you can actually watch that. And then yeah, I think it's, that's why I said in my note, if you haven't seen it online, it's been streamed on 191, 192. It may be YouTube already. It is. It's been on YouTube. And yeah. it's on YouTube. I, th I, I really think that would be a valuable time yeah. to take a look at that. He articulates yep. what he yeah, did. We put the he did speak off. very well. And yeah, it, was, it was excellent. It was a not study. too many questions were asked yeah. by the public either. I well, thought it was, it was great. So, so, so I don't, I don't want to go into what his, his uh, uh, presentation was because it's it's there. For so the viewing. What, is the, what is his per capita per parcel? number that he came up with. Are you aware? In holding the numbers 2.71 per parcel. Yeah. So I would assume that Rutland 2.71 is the same, right? Um, per per capita? Yeah, two per capita. Per People occupied you mean? housing yes. unit. He, per parcel. Now he used, I think he used that under the assumptions right. clause. Yeah. He did, that's so not based on a study of a, existing Rutland. That was a, a very loose assumption in yeah. there. So just, just to, to, to say what is, has been bothering me the most about this report is everyone's basing this report up on on we're having this growth that's out of control and all of these things that are happening I, I just want to take some numbers out of that and I brought these numbers up before but water and sewer seems to be a big thing so I want to just put these numbers on the table and I, I mean it's public comments so let me talk for just a minute and I won't take up a whole lot of time because you know when you design and and do a study on sewer okay you use what's a, what's called the TR 16 guidelines TR 16 guidelines were written by the New England Interstate Water Pollution Control Commission all the towns use them Weston and Sampson uses them everybody uses them I did a study in the town of Holden and TR-16 says that the average person uses 70 gallons per day, puts that into the sewer system per parcel. So if the per capita is 2.71, which it is in Holden, and or let's just use 2.7 for ease of a number, and there's 70 gallons per person, then the average being put into the sewer line is 190 gallons a day per household. If that per capita number works and that's the per capita number that they're talking about that's the per capita number in Holden so what I'm trying to point the, the big point that I'm trying to make is whole Rutland is loaded with MDC land MDC tributaries because we sit up so high that all the water flows to either the, the Quinnipiac it either goes to the reservoir the Wachusa reservoir or it goes to the Quabbin reservoir everything from here goes that way the land in here is restricted. For him to say there's 4,000 available building lots, out of his mind. That's, no way. That's not water time, so that's No, no, I'm not talking water time. I'm just talking about building lots. Oh. The, what, I'm, what I'm saying to say is all these boards and, and your subcommittee are, are putting their faith on a report who's using assumptions that don't really work in real life. So with what they're using, and I can tell you right now, because I do this for every single day. If you take a peak factor and enter it into your sewer guidelines or, or however how you're figuring how much sewer is going to take, you come up with your numbers. But if you use my numbers, all right, and I'm going to tell you I'll get 50 engineers that work in sewer to back those numbers up. So, and if I can do that, Let's say it gets challenged. Let's say this whole thing gets challenged and it's all based upon water and sewer and that gets knocked down. Well, it doesn't do any good to do this bylaw. Let's do it. If, if you're going to do something like this, the only thing that's going to make houses sell faster in Rutland is if they're cheaper than anywhere else. I'm certainly not going to do that. And I own most of the stuff here. I, I, so it's crazy that what we're trying to do, we're basing this on assumptions that CMRPC has made that I don't think tie into the real world. You're saying 40 permits a year. When they, when they went in for 56 permits, that was half of what we were pulling a year then. That, that, those times are never coming back. Those times aren't, they're just not coming back. It's, there's, there's not going to be the type of, of an economy in the next, I don't see in the next 15 or 20 years, I'm in the business, that, that is going to see a peak of people trying to get in and buy houses. If it hasn't already had a pent up demand come at it, it's not going to come. So, it, the, to get a permit, 
it's not just the planning board. The planning board, to give me a permit on, on, a, on a piece of land, the planning board is governed by a set of guidelines and rules. <coughs> they, if I meet their rules and regulations, the law says they have to approve it. Well, let me tell you something. That doesn't apply to the CONCOM. It doesn't apply to the DCR. It doesn't apply to the DEP. It doesn't apply to any of the environmental. It's all discretionary at that point. So to, I've been trying to get a permit at Britain Estates for years. Now, I come in the other day, they just changed the zone A maps. Now, half the place is in the zone A. When it's, when it's in the zone A, you can build a house, but you can't have a sewer line. You can't have a septic. What good is it? You can't even transport drainage in the zone A. Never mind have a BMP, which is a... So there's so many parcels that this guy is coming up with that aren't even close. I, there's nobody probably in the town that knows better than I do what's buildable and what isn't. Half, if anybody wants to sell the land, they call me first. The point is that the numbers that you're using are, are just fiction. They're fiction. And I, I, the last guy who wants to see a million houses be sold is me. So I'm not telling you that, you know, you know building permit caps and things like that. They, that's not what drives it. Prices drive it. Economy drives it. Things like that drive this stuff. But I come back to this and I keep coming back and I keep saying it, that the assumptions that they're using in this report are not correct. And it's going to get challenged and you're going to find that it's not correct. Why not do it right? Why not do it right to begin with? If you really want to look at something and look at something correctly, then use the correct numbers. Get the right facts in front of you. And you don't have them. I'm telling you, I do this for a living. I know the sewer numbers are completely wrong. I'll put 50 engineers sit right here and tell you everybody uses the TI-16 guidelines. That's exactly what I told you. That's exactly what's going to put a four-bedroom house or per capita, per parcel, is what is the way they, you can figure it any way you want. It's about 200 gallons for a four-bedroom house, period. That's what happens. So you're going to go out and look for more water. He, let me just say this again. You, according to Gary last year at the water moratorium hearing, he said that there was 100,000 gallons a day of unaccounted for water not metered. When I did the study, it was 150,000. That's a million gallons a week that's coming out of the reservoir that people aren't getting, pay, getting charged for, that's being lost. So that, if you can just save half of that capacity if at 200 gallons a day, how much is that? And, and you can draw another 200,000 gallons out of the reservoir besides what's being drawn at right now. And you're still 150,000 gallons, if I remember, if I'm using the number. So if you take 350,000 gallons a day that are left between you can, what can be drawn and what is available to get in a new permit, the Muscopog Reservoir, 350, it, let's just do it residentially now, right? 350,000 divided by 190. That's 1,842 houses, residential homes, that can come out of that reservoir before you need another water source. But if you use his numbers, you got to go tap into the DCR line. and go. I'm telling you, look at the numbers. They're not right. Any engineer that does this for a living, I speak to 10 of them a day. These are what they'll tell you. My numbers are correct. They're correct. His numbers aren't. The same thing with what's, what's buildable and what isn't. There's no way that you can build. <laughs> There's no way another 4,000 houses are coming into this town. No way. I, I, just... The, what you got to take into effect is it's a mountain around here. I, I mean, cuts and fills, are, even where I'm working now, are a nightmare, okay? <laughs> Never mind that. You got rivers through everything, you got wetlands all over the place, you got people that, 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 that appeal everything that you do. It's not as easy as everybody thinks to build a house. I mean, it, I put in, the first time I put Bryce Estates in for the planning board was in the year 2000. When did I finally stop building? 2017? Yeah. Took 17 years. To that, that place had historic issues and this, that. The point that I'm trying to make, I, I keep coming back to this. You've got to take what you're looking at and at least confirm what I'm saying. Or at least take the time to confirm 
that the numbers are right. If it's 40 permits a year, that's 400 houses in the next 10 years. How do you get the 4,000 and 13,000 people? The numbers just don't jive, especially at 2.7 per capita. I mean, that is, a, that is a fact. Those numbers are done by you take the population of the town, divide it by the number of parcels, and you come up with a per capita. How much harder can it, or easier can it be? It's not. CMRPC, I, I'm sure they're a, a big help, but when it comes to factual numbers, they have to use, if you guys are going to base managed growth bylaws and water and sewer moratoriums and everything else off of their numbers and their assumptions, you should at least get a second opinion or a third opinion. They're not correct. If you built, it, it, how long did, did it take to build 1,800 houses? It's 60 permits a year over, what was that, over 20 years? Jeff, I apologize. Was it over 20 years? 21 years. Yep. So that's 1,200 houses in 20 years in a boom. And again, it's not a boom right now, right? You get enough water in that reservoir for 30 years at 60, at 60 a year. So you're going to go out and you're going to go do all this work and come up with all these other sources. You don't need it. You got plenty. Same thing with sewage. If you look at sewage based upon 200 gallons, and I'm telling you, I have studies. I took from, from a Freedom of Information Act, we got every water bill and sewer bill for the subdivisions that existed. Every single permit, every single metered water bill in town. And we took by the house, by the subdivision, we divided it out. Nothing came to more than 190. Central Tree Estates, Hawthorne Estates, Laurel Lakers, anybody on sewer, the, the Vista drives over here, never come out to more than that. So look at that before you go crazy and making, buying water here, buying water there, doing this and, and looking for more, you know, gallonage. Right now, the I and I problem in this town, this is the Water and Sewer Commission's problem. The Water and Sewer Commission is sitting right in front of me. You want to stop the growth, you want to stop metered flow. So here's, here's the deal. Water users, right? There's a water commission in this town, or a water department, right? Those guys have a fixed cost. Stop people from putting people, stop it from people from putting on the water, from tying into the water. Now you've just take, taken the cost and you've kept it in the same area. But if you put more users on it, now you can spread the rates. The rates aren't going to go up by the person, that you can spread the rates over more users. There's plenty of available water, plenty of available water, but you don't let anybody tie in because you're using factual, infactual or fictional numbers that a man's making assumptions and he's basing it upon peaking factors and not actualities. So there's plenty of sewage to tie in a hundred houses, uses, puts not, in an actual day when they're fully built out and fully being used, puts 19,000 gallons of sewage, 100 houses, into the sewer line. That's a fact. Check the numbers. Call anybody you want, and they'll tell you that that's a fact. All right? If you want to design something, you've got to design for a peaking factor. Those are the numbers that Weston and Sampson's giving you. But what actually goes into the sewer line is a completely different number. You're using numbers that really aren't correct. And if you do that, you're going to base what you're doing on the wrong thing, and it's going to cost way more money than it needs to. There's plenty of room, plenty of availability. Fix the I&I &I problem. The I&I &I is inflow and infiltration. It, the stuff is coming in the tops of the manholes. It's coming in the sides. There's so many problems over the last... I, I, got the, I just got uh, from Joe the... the uh, the amount of sewage that's been taken out over the last, I and I that's been taken out over the last six years, it's barely a drip. It's barely a drip. You've done nothing for I and I. Every time I file for a connection permit, I pay a thousand dollars of that connection permit on the sewer connection goes to the I and I fund. I pay when I have water and sewer, my water and sewer bill. There's a percentage or, or a number. I don't know if it's a fixed number or a percentage that goes to I and I. So, but you've done nothing to fix it. Instead, you put a moratorium in. The moratorium doesn't do anything. All it does is stop the number of users and it's going to raise the rates. 
You've got it right now, I'll guarantee you, this town has to raise their sewer rates because they're paying for fresh water going down the sewer line and it's being metered when it leaves by the DCR and it's not being charged to anybody. All it is is I and I. Inflow and infiltration. There old, there's old sewer lines in this town and the stuff comes in. And it, it, the new stuff that you build, you got a vacuum test, you got you got to put a camera in them. You can't, today when you build the stuff, it, it's not the same. But you've got stuff in here that goes back to the 30s and 40s. It, it, that stuff has got, it's got to be fixed. It's got to be, even the stuff that was put in in the 60s, you know, I mean, roots grow in them and water gets in and, and, and it's just, it, it's got to be fixed. And that's the stuff that's going to really make the difference on water and sewer and what, what the town is paying based upon what's going in and what's being metered when it leaves. So the other thing that building <coughs> permit caps do, and I, and I say this not in a threatening manner, but in an, I, what I've seen happen in other communities. When you put building permit caps in and you start to change the zoning and things like that, you, you attract or, or almost force 40 Bs. Now, I don't like 40 Bs because too much government looking over your shoulder, you know, the, everything's looked at and everything, you can only make so much and you only this. But the norm is eight units per acre. So if, just, if you just took Noble Hill, for example, and, and I could, one lot I could put four units on. So that's, there's 102 lots there. So that's 400 units. 100 of that is low income. Now, low income by just by what people say, I don't know if it's true or not, but I think it is, they, they need more services, larger families, smaller, younger families, and you put more people in the schools and things like that. But when you stop and you, and you start putting caps on things and trying to control things that really aren't out of control, it creates things like this. It's a cause and effect. And the other thing, to, it, it, it's going to create a legal challenge. I haven't had the need to challenge the water and sewer moratorium yet, but I'm telling you right now, when I do, it's not going to hold water. Because I know the numbers. Everybody knows the numbers. So why put the town in that situation? Why not just fix what, what the real problem is, which is I and I? You don't have a problem with water, except for you got a leak somewhere of a, to, to the tune of 100,000 gallons a day. Fix the leak before you go shutting off everybody from tying into everything and, and, and creeping down the number of users and raising everybody's rates. If you put more users on, you take what you have for cost and you spread it out over more people. You don't have a problem with capacity in either, in either side. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking, of, I have another question, so I just want to, and I want to ask this. I was told that when the school, the new school, Glenwood School was built, that they took into account Bryce Estates and Noble Hill. Is that, does anybody know the answer to that? I think they did, didn't they? They had a bunch of I, empty I, I rooms really in that place. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're not at capacity yet, but the other two schools are. Mm. I think they looked at an overall population for the entire uh, town, because they've already did sort of a redistricting, right? Because when they opened, they were going to be uh, K through uh, five, mm. and they are not that anymore. So in that in that interim, uh, the times have sort of changed. I think probably, you know, it reverts back to where Holden is, where they have a school that was just built. They used appropriate numbers. They used some um, forecasts, and the day it was done, it's now too small. Mm. <coughs> Part of the problem is you're only you're only allowed to go out so many years. Mm -hmm. Right, with MSBA. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you go out, what, what is it, like six years, Five eight years? Five or six, yeah. yeah. So I'm that's it. Yeah. Okay. That's all you can go out with your base yeah. your student population. Right. And then you have a growth spurt, or, or if it's just not a real number. By the time you build the school, yeah. you're almost at, you're almost at that, that time frame. Yeah, so there's some space at Glenwood right now, you know, if you count that, mm -hmm. um, but then there's no space at Central Tree, and so some of those we're seeing, you know, a little bit of boom years, and it's kind of, it hasn't averaged out yet. You, you may I, may I, I just, uh, 
thank you for all your input, which you've done your homework. And I, but my opinion on why the town wants a growth management, the water side of it, it's just a small part of it. it that's, that's from what I understand is what everybody's saying. I could be wrong, but the, the whole connecting up to the water issue is maybe what? If you go cutting forth only a quarter for something, why we want this growth management? Yeah. Well, uh, but, but Sean, uh, just to, uh, excuse me. But may I just, no, I, can we, oh. we just want to, I mean, I, you had a lot. So I did. I, I, there, is there anybody that wanted to comment on anything specifically? The, the only thing I, again, to what Clea said, I, I agree with in, in most things, but I, I think what, to Wayne's point, it gets back to economics. We haven't been able to have a budget that is freaking increasing any year, and, and, and maybe I'm wrong, I'll talk to the boss about this, but in five years, it's basically been level funded. We've been struggling to pay our employees any type of raises or step changes. We've, we've had to go, thank God for Devro to add a police officer to the force. So my struggle with the growth management is to slow things down, to be able to, because the schools aren't getting any cheaper. We're at 4.5% or 4.7% now. They did the raise this year. Is that what they're asking? 3.9. Okay, so I was off. Okay. <laughs> Let's just say 4%. I personally don't get a 4% raise every year at my job. So it's, it's almost getting to a point where it's going to get unsustainable. And that's taken so much of our monies away from our town services. If we don't do some type of growth management to slow down the amount of kids going to school, it, that percentage is going to get larger and larger. So I think, to, in my point, it comes down to finance. This is what I'm looking at is what do we do for growth management to help stabilize the amount of money that's going into the schools to be able to give that back to our town services? Right. So, so for, Holden, for all the schools is a whole different issue because it, that growth is, is more than any town can sustain with Prop 2.5. Oh, I, um, yeah. yeah. Well, so Holden, we have to keep under Prop 2.5, but they don't have to. So, mm -hmm. um, Well, Holden was actually the driving force behind asking the district for to stay right around a 3.5% increase. Um, the problem was that when the numbers came out, Holden's uh, student population increased significantly over the past year. So they are looking at a huge hit this year. So their technical increase, even though the school budget increased 3.8 whatever, they're looking at more like seven. They, they, they're taking a hit for over a million dollars, 1.2, and it is directly related to student population. Uh, and that's consistently where we've been seeing issues over and over. I but yeah, I see what, totally see what you're saying. And some of that is going to be a state fight about the foundation mm -hmm. formula. And, that's and separate. That's nothing but. that I want the growth management. Just to a point now, what I said earlier, 10 years ago when the spike happened, that's when maybe something should have happened to try to mitigate what's... Because the kids are in the school systems 10 years ago. So now they're in middle school and high school. So we're still seeing the funds... If we don't do something now to mitigate the next 10 years, it's okay. not going to get any better. Mm. So Right, because in this economic sort of stabilization yes. period that we've had, our student numbers have stabilized as well and actually dropped a little bit. So we're The only thing that saved this town from going bankrupt is 2008. Thank God for a recession. <laughs> I hate to say that, but without it, if the peak would have kept going, it would have been unsustainable to the point where... You yeah. had three, and I'm, I'm joking, three fire and three officers, and that's about all we've been able to afford. Well, and I mean, one guy plowing. Well, how many, how many years did we talk about closing this building, closing mm -hmm. the senior yes. center, it laying just, off all of our part-time officers? These were real conversations, and I, it's kind of a miracle that we got through um, as well as we did. So that, that's my main point is it, it's more of a financial reason that I see the growth management being, I guess, moved forward. Um, I think the water and sewer that's going to get that's going to get worked out. <laughs> I, I do somewhat. I, I see Ron's numbers. I went through the presentation. And I see that we've capped out. Um, to Clee's point, I've got I'm sort of 50-50 on this. Are those numbers really real? Are they not? We've been arguing about them for over five years now, mm -hmm. and we've never come to a conclusion. Of the, the town is itself, along with the, the builders, we've been in more <laughs> meetings than I can imagine arguing about these numbers. So, some way we got to figure that out. I get that. You should meet with Joe <laughs> Buckley. Uh, he has a diff He's he's a progressive individual. I've met. I've listened to him speak a couple times. He's a very progressive individual. I'll be interested to see how he goes as compared to our past DPW <clears throat> chief. I'll leave it at that. So that was that's my only point for the growth manager, which is a comment. Buckley said, "I'm really it's a for me it's the financials." 
I just want to reiterate it's a continuing study and uh, CMRPC is, uh, is going to continue with the school data and the traffic data um, as it goes on with the final report expected sometime in June in there. But if there's something else that's specific that we wanted him to address while we have the grant, uh, I'm happy to bring it forward. Can I just address one thing? Your INI is not just the town's responsibility. DCR has trunk lines that go through the town, mm -hmm. and they have, they have not even looked at those trunk lines since they put them in. So we don't know how much of that 150,000 gallons is actually DCR's problem, not ours. So, it's more like 300,000. 300, whatever, yeah. whatever the number is. <coughs> Excuse me, we don't know how much of it is ours and how much is theirs, because they haven't even looked at it. It's been, what, five years and when they were supposed to start yeah. repairing them? Maintenance. Well, and, and but to your point, when we have looked at it from the town's perspective, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, Gary has had multiple times with Sampson and Weston have multiple times. But in fact, I remember right, they've come to the town with their multiple phases so, of, uh, of repairs and, and, uh, and studies. It, so, it, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I and I never stops. I mean, yes, back in 2007, we started a large phase project that was going over three years and the money was big. Um, but what Joe has walked into now is the fact that we have a complicated sewer system and it requires not just I and I, but ongoing maintenance. We have lots of pump stations. We have not no longer the gravity set fed system that we started with back in the 1930s. Everything is aging. It's all going to need maintenance. And every time we take over uh, more roads and more sewers, that's more maintenance on us. And we have treatment and transportation costs that are going up and we can't control them. Um, so all of that is factoring into it. But you're right. I, that's one small, it's a huge piece. And yet it's a small piece of all this with the managed growth bylaw. And, and you're still fi finding illegal tie-ins too. They find them all the time. I, I guess my comment is it's, it's a little disheartening here that we have town engineers and other towns and state agencies <coughs> that are all wrong, um, and that our only sewer problem is I and I. When we can see that it isn't, we have basically no sewer-free cash. That we don't have any worries about water when we have overall gallons per day usage numbers right in front of us, and we have a pond that is finite and it's the only thing we have, and it's surface water and it needs to be protected. Um, and the fact that, you know, you start hearing the threats of lawsuits and 40 bs and all that, that's all disheartening. I mean, I think all of us are here to do this for the right reasons and try to see the town through its next 10 or 15 years. Um, so hopefully we uh, get all of our ducks in a row and have and David, have, have all of our professionals helping us we just have to be get real over the hurdles. We that reservoir, too. It's not, it's spring-fed. Yeah, it's spring-fed. So, so, uh, we don't know where that source. water actually comes from. Right. Right. So, <laughs> no, well, no well seriously, so with all this fracking that goes on with people with wells and everything, if, if somebody fracks in the right spot, it breaks into that aquifer that feeds mm -hmm. the reservoir, Suddenly, it's we, could lose, we could lose the water. Yeah, that's right. So um, that has to be kept on top of your head, too. And when they put the tunnel under, they lost half of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it never came back to full after they uh, got done. <laughs> it's I and I into the. Yeah. <laughs> it goes into the sewer line. Good idea. No, no, no. That's probably what's happening. Uh, it's I and I into the. Into the, into the, into the, into the <laughs> if, if I may, I like if you can give an opinion on other than water and sewer reasons why. We may have, we may need or want a growth bylaw, By, I mean, a growth management. If, if I could, Madam Chair. So, the reason I was pointing those numbers out wasn't to argue about the numbers. It was to tell you that the report that you're basing your management growth bylaw on is flawed. In my yeah, opinion, but that's only that, a percentage of why we're basing this on. Well, I mean, no, you're basing it on how much land can be built in this town. You're basing mm -hmm. it upon. Uh, uh, an assumption that what what's going to happen is that we're going to go back to 100 permits a year. I mean, there's a way to do that when the planning board approves a plan. The planning board could say you can only pull so many permits a year on this plan. So you know, for the next five years or six years, they they can do that when they when they approve it. So it, it's there's a way for the planning board to handle that stuff. Yeah, and they do they, 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 they do it in Holden. I mean, you know, you get so many permits a year per site, that's We've it. We've done that with phase. So the point is, there's a way for the plan board to do this without, you know, 
doing it that way. <laughs> and, and the only thing I was trying to do, and I wasn't, I, I'm telling you right now, I, I do this every day. I know those numbers are wrong. I know they are. Check it out. Check it out. I'm not, what you, what the numbers that you're getting are for design numbers. They're not actually what goes in and what is needed. So if, I, I'll, I'd love to sit down and talk with you guys with, with, uh, for an, with an open mind about water and sewer. That wasn't what it, the point that I was trying to make was that you're basing this on a report that is flawed. I'm telling you the numbers, the, the assumptions, that, and, and their assumptions. So he can make whatever assumption he wants, but you can't take him as gospel. I'm, that's the only thing I was trying to do, Sean. I wasn't trying to say that <coughs> I'm not, this isn't about water and sewer. This isn't about, this is about managed growth bylaw. The reason that everybody wants to put a managed growth bylaw is we're growing too fast. What, based upon what numbers? 40 permits a year at, at 2.7 per parcel? That's if you don't grow a little bit, you're going to die. One of the problems you have with the financial part of it is, in the old days, we had new growth to put into the budget. You don't have any, hardly any new growth to put into the budget, which doesn't get held up with the old numbers. See, that was my argument when I first moved here, um, being an engineer and having a business background. Adding houses did not help the town at all. In fact, it based on the amount of uh, new children that were coming in with the uh, because this was the affordable town to move to as opposed to Holden the other ones to stay in the Wachusett system. Princeton, Sterling and Holden were on the higher side of cost and with Paxton's tax rate, Rutland was the choice. And we were building a lot of houses and we were getting a lot of income and the sales pitch and again I use the word sales pitch maybe that's not the right word is that we were, the, the more of the new growth came in, the better off we were for the town. And that wasn't true. We were putting too many kids and costs into the system, and we weren't growing our town services. And yes, it took five to 10 years for it to catch up, but it did catch up. And it's more like 10 years, and now we're in trouble. That was, that was the tough part I had back then, because everybody was on the sales pitch that more new growth actually benefited yeah. the town. And I, I didn't believe it then, and, I, and I, now it's proven that it didn't happen. Didn't, help us. And, and again, this is my thoughts. I, I don't have any numbers to back me up, but just listening to the FICOM and uh, how we have it and no money for the last five years. My point was that well, new growth added to that, added to the budget. Was, it, it, you, didn't have to, you didn't have to use it and, and for the two and a half. Okay. It got added right in. That's all I was trying to say was, okay. it, so it, it, all, what happened over the last five or six years is you didn't have the growth to add to the budget, so you didn't have to have it under the two and a half, but Mr. that's Mr. Mr. okay. That's okay. unsustainable, and you have been at every town meeting watching us battle to fund the public services that this community needs. You've been at every town meeting. You know the battles we've had. You saw what happened in the new growth money. You saw what happened when the new growth, yes, slowed down, but we were still absorbing. You cannot continue the level of new growth and free cash that happens once and expect that it is going to sustain you through 12 years of a child's education. Really first, disingenuous of you, of, first, of a person who sits in these town meetings every year himself. I, I will tell you this. The last town meeting I went to was on November 19th, and that was to get my roads accepted. Before that, I don't think I went to one since, I don't know, 2008. Well, well, that's that's you. Because, that's because <laughs> so there you go. That, that's so, just The point is I don't sit there at every town meeting and watch it go through this. Wow. Wow. Chair, just okay. a question. Do we have, we've got two or three others, and I just wonder if anybody else in the public had comment. So Good that's, point. <laughs> that was Any comments from the public? <laughs> yes, Peter. Back here. Um, and then there's this gentleman. He said no. no. <laughs> I have been involved in virtually every bylaw addition and amendment in the last three years. I'm going to second what Norm said a couple times. The concern is good bylaw, and my concern that rush leads to bad law. It feels like it's rushing to me, and that we're rushing to make an artificial deadline of the May 11th town meeting, when there will be another town meeting after that when it can be voted on. It doesn't have to be annual. You be bored on any town meeting. I look at the timeline of eight weeks between right now, it's actually less than eight weeks till town meeting, if my math is right. It is. And I think of all the work that needs to go on, I know the pace of the bylaw review subcommittee. I've worked with them quite a lot. I'm very concerned about 
a rush occurring and missing things. Listening to the discussion tonight, I've heard a few things come up where it's been, oh, we didn't think about that, or, hmm, that's an idea. With prudent review, you get all of those bases covered. I'm not saying, oh my gosh, we shouldn't have a, a managed growth bylaw. I'm saying, let's make sure we take the time to do it right collectively. That's really all I wanted to say now. Thank you. I think there's no question about a faster track now. I mean, as you know, we've had some turnover too, and that partly affected it. Mm -hmm. And But I would disagree with Rush. And I, I mean, I completely hear what you, you're all saying. If it's not right, it's not going to pass, and it was not worth the work. Um, luckily, we have professionals to help us this time. Um, and I think we had such a good base to start from and why we didn't try again sooner, mm -hmm. you know, hindsight 2020. But we had a very well-researched base to start from with the managed growth bylaw that was attempted before. We now have the professionals to help us help see us through this process. So, but you're right, fast tracking, yes. Rushing the process, that word makes it sound like we're going to be sloppy. And I don't think we need to be sloppy. But you're right, we need to watch what we're doing. Does anybody you remember know. how how the vote went on the last time the bylaw was I have it. I don't know. I have it. I have, I have the, <laughs> I got the minutes of the uh, the hearing. I know it was fairly I got the close minutes of, of the ATM. Um, well, there was there was a majority. Yay. However, it wasn't the two thirds. It was only a few votes short. I got it. That's fine. Right. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twelve. Yeah. Some number. Yeah. There she is. I bet you were a point here. I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so was mine. So was a lot of other people in my country. I'll be calling the same ones again. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that we know. That we know. <laughs> okay. So. It has no relevance, so I'm just curious. Mm. Mm -hmm. He's trying to think of how many people he's got to get in that hall. That's so Article 9, uh, Mr. Sullivan moved that the town vote to amend the <coughs> bylaws of the town by adding a new section entitled Growth Management, a copy of which was on file. A PowerPoint presentation was given. The bylaw proposed a cap of 56 dwelling units, plus an additional five permits with an exemption for senior housing. The Finance Committee did not recommend this article because they have not seen any figures as to how this would affect the town financially. The town had depended on new growth to help fund budgetary issues, uh, budgetary increases. Franz Steiner moved to delete a section from the bylaw. The motion was seconded. Town Council explained that an amendment to a zoning bylaw needs to be in writing. Uh, an amendment to the zoning bylaw may affect the bylaw throughout. Mr. Steiner withdrew his motion. The motion was then made to move the question. The motion seconded. It was unanimously passed. So the motion was made for a paper ballot. The motion was seconded. The moderator called for a standing vote. Ayes 260, nays 164. A paper ballot was used. The town meeting voted and the ballots were then counted. Yes 240, no 178. The motion failed. The vote needed to pass by two thirds. End of article. So what were those numbers? Um, 240 so 240 to 178. 248, 178. Uh, so that is uh, public record. So annual so town meeting May 18, 2002, yeah. specific to Article 9. It's a different dynamic. The other document that I referenced is the uh, the minutes of the corrected minutes of the Rutland Planning Board public hearing on phase growth. Mm -hmm. April 23rd, 2002, available for the record. So. How many? So it wasn't close. <coughs> it was about 60 off. So I'm doing my math right now. <laughs> Lee Grant. 60 or 65 off, they were short. 418 was the total number of people. Fabulous. Voting. I think about the last couple of town meetings, we were lucky to get 100 people there, right? Yeah, they needed 280. They got. I think that was. A record for attendance at town meeting. Yeah. Mm. I remember the oh, line yeah, out the door. They had 280 and they got 240. Yeah. yeah. 40. Mm. <coughs> so 418 total. Mm. Yeah. So it wasn't that close. Mm. By the by, yeah. point six six. By the way, I, I do kind of agree with Peter that this is definitely something of a rush. But by the same token, we have uh, 
two people at least, I don't know, I certainly have confidence in Dave and Ron to, in the subcommittee. to get this thing, you know. There's also a foundation in, in, in initialized and it's not from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just it. We're not starting from scratch on it. Uh, yeah, it would probably be nice to take the time to wait until there, there are many, but, but I think it can be done. There are many of the options that are in play in there. We, we, we there are six mm -hmm. options in there. We're only concentrating on this one. The managed growth is almost just a, just simply a cap on the number of building permits. If you look at it that way, at the page and a half, mm -hmm. period. And then we're going to look at your uh, wetland biome, and then we're going to look at up, up zoning, down zoning. Like that. Then we're going to look at asking for an increase in the, in the water permit draw. Then we're going to look at uh, renegotiating with the city of Worcester in there on the sewer capacity. Uh, Talking about in that order. Not in that order. No, not in that order. I would say go for the water next and soon because that's going to take time. Yeah. That's he said that's take, probably obtainable, but it's going to be a cost too. So we mm -hmm. have to. We it's have probably to. Probably take years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is not the end-all be-all here. Mm -hmm. This is not the end of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but anyways, I said my piece. I think we've come full circle with the conversation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we ready? I think I'm ready to motion. Go Make on. a motion. We adjourn and board of selectmen. Second. Make a motion and adjourn plan board. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank Where you guys. You